Jim Simpson with Monty Moore back at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio, where the first game is about to begin, or I should say the seventh game is about to begin. Looking down, Reggie Jackson, the one man that the Oakland A's sure wish they had. They have lost two important men to injury before this World Series. They lost Daryl Knowles before the playoff championships, their left-handed reliever, their fine one, that forced Blue Moon, uh, Vita Blue into the bullpen, and then they lost their cleanup hitter. Home run slugger, one of the most aggressive ball players in the American League, and Reggie Jackson, who, through his own aggressiveness in scoring the winning run on the final day of the American League playoffs, pulled a hamstring muscle and is out. Jackson has taken the lineup cards up to the umpires, and Captain Pete Rose has turned in his lineup card on behalf of the Cincinnati Reds. The Reds are about to take the field, and in discussing the loss of Reggie Jackson, you know, it cannot be said that one man makes a baseball team. But if you have a team and we had one important man, that's a different story. And that is what the A's have lost in losing Reggie Jackson and Daryl Knowles. The umpires this afternoon, right back to the first game umpires. Chris Pelicudis will be behind the plate. He's from the National League. Jim Honachik of the American League will be at first base. Mel Steiner of the National League at second base. Frank Umon of the American League over third. Down the left field line will be Bob Engel. Down the right field line will be Bill Howler. Warren Giles, President Emeritus of the National League, who had the National League headquarters right here in Cincinnati during his years as president, has just run up the first honorary pitch to Johnny Bench. And quite frankly, it has slacked off raining, and the umbrellas, keep your fingers crossed, have come down here at Riverfront Stadium. But heavy showers are due about two hours from now. And now they are introducing the Reds players. They do this, and the players run from the dugout to their position. Bench goes to his spot behind the mound. Tony Perez goes to first base. Joe Morgan down to second. Dave Concepcion to short. Dennis Menke to third. Pete Rose goes to left. Bobby Tolan to center. Cesar Geronimo in right. And Jack Billingham strides to the mound. Winner of the third game of the World Series. And for the last game of the World Series, let's call to the microphone the voice of the Oakland Athletics, and I think he's got his fingers crossed, Monty Moore. Thank you very much, Jim Simpson. And before we start, we may not be around here at the end of the game. Uh, if the A's are in the lead, uh, we will be headed to the dressing room. We do want to say what a pleasure it's been working with you and Lynn Dillon and the entire NBC radio crew on the games we've been on radio. It's been a pleasure. When the A's take off today, they will be heading to the West Coast and some of the players were talking this morning. Our coats will either be drenched with champagne or tears. That's what a World Series means, of course. To the winners, they pop the corks and pour the champagne. And somebody opens up the billfold because to the winners of this World Series, the first seven-game World Series in history ever to be sold out, all seven games in advance, it's going to be a mighty, mighty big paycheck. Some are estimating in the neighborhood of twenty to $22,000 per man to the winners, and upwards of fourteen dollars to $15,000 per man for the losers. So as they are playing out here today, one error, one mistake, one bad pitch by one man could certainly make a difference in a lot of men's paychecks at the end of this thing. But I know that no players on a 25-man roster look at it like that. This is a team effort that got these men here, and it'll be a team effort that wins or loses it. Bonnie, there's a delay here, and I believe it, yes, they're taking a banner right from behind the foul pole down the left field line, and the foul line umpires wanted it out of there, so there would be no white if they had to judge whether ball went fair or foul. Campy Campaneris leads it off for the Oakland A's in a vastly changed lineup for this, the last game of 1972 for the A's and the Reds. Campaneris, a 240 hitter for the course of the year, the American League stolen base champion, has had only three hits in the series. The first pitch swung on, popped out into short right field where Cesar Geronimo is under it. He's got him, and one pitch means one out. That brings up Angel Mangual, who has been up only six times in the series. He's had three hits, one of them the biggest hit of his life. It gave the A's a win in Oakland in a come-from-behind victory. Billingham, a low-ball pitcher, got that pitch up to Campanaris a little bit. And Campy hit it right off the fist. Mangual, a right-handed batter, on the Major League's rookie all-star team last year. 
takes the first pitch inside, ball one. Angel got off to a very slow start this year because he came to camp with an injury he suffered in winter baseball. There's a curveball line, right center field, coming on. It's Tolan, he leaps, it goes off his glove to the wall. Manguel goes to first, heads to second. He's rounding second on his way to third. The throw comes in, and he makes it standing up. Bobby Tolan, I believe, misjudged a blast off the bat of Angel Manguel. He came in on that ball, and at the last instant, leaped high. It just hit his glove and bounded away all the way to the wall. Manguel really stung that ball. It's an error on Bobby Tolan, and the A's get the first break of the seventh game. Tolan did not figure that ball was hit that hard, but it was really stung by Manguel. Now the Reds have the right side of their infield in and the left side about halfway. As Joe Rudy, the A's top regular season hitter with a 305 average and 19 home runs, 70 runs batted in for the year, moves into the plate. Jack Billingham will work off the stretch here, even though he could go to the wind. Curve ball, outside, taken, ball one. The hardest play a center fielder has to make is that line drive right at him, and Tolan made it incorrectly, according to the three-man official scoring jury for the World Series. Billingham off the stretch, throws to Rudy, curve ball, swung on and foul off the end of the bat, it's one and one. And the batter figures that he is fairly lucky if he fouls one like that and does not hit it fair because Rudy was way out front of it. A very tightly drawn in infield to give you an idea of how Sparky Anderson is putting his trust in his pitching staff today. They're not willing to give up a run even in the very first inning. Ball on a strike count, the pitch, curveball swung on and missed. He has thrown Rudy three straight breaking balls and he hung that one. A fly ball to the outfield would score Manguel. On this artificial turf, a bouncer on the infield at somebody would make it mighty difficult to score. Joe Rudy at the plate with a count of one ball, two strikes. Shortens up on the bat handle just a little, down into a crouch. Here's the pitch. Again, the curve in the dirt bench blocks it. Two balls, two strikes. Billingham throwing Joe Rudy four straight breaking balls in this situation. He's a sinker ball, low ball type pitcher. But he has gone to the breaking ball here on Rudy. And it's interesting, Jim, the way you note the pitching changes in the patterns to a batter during the course of a seven-game series. When they see these batters every day for seven days in pressure-packed situations, it oftentimes changes the information they had garnered through weeks of scouting. It's two balls, two strikes. Angel Manguel of the Oakland A's at third base. Joe Rudy at the plate. Dillingham pitches. Curve again. Swung on. Hit up into the air and not deep left field at all. Pete Rose may have his arm tested by Manguel. Pete makes the catch. Here comes Manguel to the plate. Here comes the throw. Manguel goes back. A huge out for Jack Billingham as Pete Rose cut the fly ball in left field very shallow. Manguel bluffed the start but held on. The throw was right on the money. That is the kind of run the Oakland A's have had trouble scoring the last three or four weeks. A runner at third and less than two out where all they need is the fly ball to deep outfield or even medium outfield and they haven't been getting it. Rudy got under that one just a little bit. Now here's Gene Tennis up. Two down, and the infield can back up. Tennis has hit four home runs in the World Series. Three here and one in Oakland. The pitch to him. Low and away with a fastball. Billingham threw five straight breaking balls to Joe Rudy in that pressure situation. Billingham to the windup. Around comes the arm. The pitch. Tennis swing. Pass it at the third baseman. High pass off his glove into left field. Here comes Manguel in to score. The artificial turf ran out, and it looked as if that ball hit right where the dirt ends, and the artificial turf begins in the outfield. It took a high hop over Minke, who was playing deep, to protect against just that. It's a base hit for Gene Tennis, and the Oakland A's lead one to nothing with Sal Bando coming to the plate. 
Well, they talk about the true hops, Jim. That was a bad one. Yeah, uh, we talk about momentum, Marty. Cincinnati had it yesterday, but it is Oakland that scored first today. So momentum really becomes a nebulous thing. As some of the players say, momentum from yesterday ends on the first pitch today. It's a new ball game. Billingham pitching to Bando. Strike call, says Chris Pelicutis. Bando in the World Series has had six hits and 22 at-bats. He has not knocked in a run as yet. During the course of the year, Bando had 16 game-winning hits for the A's. Here's the pitch. Look out at almost hitting. Fastball inside backs him off the plate. Bando has led the Oakland A's team and runs batted in the last three years in a row. He has been an all-star in the American League as a third baseman. Tennis leading away from first. Billingham to the plate. Curve way outside. Great backhanded stop by Johnny Bench. It's a real pleasure to watch a man like Johnny Bench, who just owns that catching position, work in a ball game and in a seven-game series. You hear about the great players of the other leagues, but until you get to look at them for seven straight days, you don't really get to appreciate them. Two and one count to Bando. Tennis off first. The pitch on the way. Swing and a foul down. It's two balls, two strikes. The A's are on the boards first here in the seventh and final game of the 1972 World Series, one that has had already five one-run decisions. And then yesterday, the Reds broke it open late and won eight to one going away. Billingham sets. Here's the pitch. Curvy struck him out swinging. Bendo chased the bad one. So in the first inning, Oakland gets one run, one hit, one error, and one left. After a half inning, it's Oakland one, Cincinnati coming to bat. Along with Monty Moore, this is Jim Simpson back in Cincinnati. The ball can take some funny hops, can it? Bobby told him the premier center fielder who has knocked in six runs in the last three games, stolen five bases, made some great catches, misjudged the Manguel line drive into a three-base error. And Menke, who's been gobbling up everything, playing deep for Gene Tennis, had the ball carom high, carom high, and go off his glove and out into uh, left field for a run-scoring single for Tennis, who has now driven in eight runs to lead everybody in that department. And so that's an unearned run, charged against Jack Billingham and the Reds. And now the Reds come back, and they're half of the first inning, and Blue Moon Odom has just completed his lineups. And he's got that top three to contend with. And lately, they have been running wild. Rose, Morgan, and Colas. The Reds first. Oakland leads it one to nothing, and here's Monty. Pete Rose, a hometown boy from Cincinnati. And the toast of the town, certainly. Through the last eight years, he has hit 300 every year. He is the complete ball player. He's played second base and made the National League All-Star team there. He has played right field and made it there. And this year, he is a left fielder for Cincinnati. And he's made it there. But basically, he has made it right at the plate, where he's a switch hitter, now batting left against Johnny Odom. In the series, Rose has had four hits and 23 at-bats. Here's Odom's first pitch to him. Curve high and outside ball one. With the A's scoring in the first inning today, it marked the first time in the seven-game series they've been able to get on the scoreboard in the first inning. The Reds have done it once in the first inning of the fifth game. Odom into that slow windup. The 1-0 pitch is a fastball strike called 1-1. One one. Rose has been having a little friendly needling session with John Odom the last couple of days. Yesterday, Rose told Odom, you won't get me out on that little dinky curveball you threw me out in Oakland the other day. And Odom says, I won't have to. I won't be pitching here tomorrow. Here's a pitch, curve. Misses low, ball two. Rose says, if you're not here tomorrow, you'll be AWOL and watching the game on TV because we'll be here. Well, Rose's prediction proved to be right on that count. He is here, and the Reds are here battling the A's for a lot of money and prestige in the World Series. 2-1 pitch. Bouncing ball out of the mound. Dick Green goes to his right behind second, throws across his body to first. Tennis can't get it in time. Odin's going to go over and argue with Frank Schumann. Or it's Jim Harnacek, the umpire at first base, an American League umpire. Gene Tennis arguing with you, uh, Harnacek. A bang, bang play at first base, and we've had a lot of close ones. They're having to pull John Odom away from the argument. That's the big point, I believe, to get Odom out of there. Odom has been so effective, Monty, with that one earned run and last 26 innings pitch. 
Of an argument like that, you don't want to lose a pitcher like that. So Dick Williams is coming out, talking now to tennis, first of all, with Honorjik listening in on his argument. Matter of fact, uh, Williams comes out, uh, Monty, come to think of it, not only to calm down Odom, but to calm down tennis, the guy that's driven in eight runs, including the one in this ball game. Honorjik is the umpire who's been involved in two very, very close decisions. One at third base on the stolen base by Tolan a couple of days ago. And now here at first base. That was really close at first. Williams is talking with Hanachik, who kicked him out of a game earlier this year in an American League confrontation. Odom starts pointing that, uh, or uh, Williams starts pointing that finger, and now Hanachik's pointing it back. Rose is just listening in over the shoulder of Hanachik. Green made a fine play there, Jim. We can't discount that. It was a high bouncer over the mound, and he threw across his body over to first base. And there is the reason that Pete Rose is a better hitter from the left side than the right. He got those extra two steps, which gave him a base hit. So now the Reds have Pete Rose on. Rose in the series has stolen one base. For the season, he stole ten. Here is Joe Morgan. Morgan has had two hits and 21 at-bats, but the five walks and the stolen bases which followed the walks have been very, very instrumental in the Reds' success so far. The left-handed batter with good power. He's hit 16 home runs. Odom off the stretch. Rose faking a start, holding a curveball. Drops in there for a call strike. It is 0-1. The tensions are high. We might see a lot of arguments today because they're bound to be close plays, and close plays will be debated on one side or the other. Pickoff attempt back over at first base, and Dick Green started cheating a little bit to his left that time as he thought Odom was going to pitch. He does that many times when he sees a slow curveball called to a left-handed batter. Odom throws to the plate. Hard sinker, strike called on the inside corner. It is 0-2. Now Morgan is yelling at Pelicutis. Going to be that kind of a day. Players say they are more relaxed for the seventh game of the World Series than they were for the fifth game of the playoffs in their respective leagues. O two 2 the count. Morgan cocks the bat. Here's the pitch. Bouncing ball towards second. Campanaris has got it. Steps on second one. Guns it to first. Double play. So Odom came back with a good sinker to get Morgan to hit into a double play. And he doesn't do that too often during the course of the year with his speed. Now two out. Nobody on. And here's Bobby Tolan, who's been a star for the Reds, not only during the year, but here in the World Series. Tolan has had seven base hits. He has knocked in six runs. He's a left-handed batter, and he has knocked in four of his runs against left-handed pitching. Bobby Tolan, a very exciting player. This Reds club is an exciting club to watch. They depend a lot on speed. They have the power to go along with it. Odom's pitch, a slow curve over the head of Tolan, and Odom threw his blooper for the first time today. Nowhere nearly as high as Rip Sewell used to throw his but Odom does throw a very high, blooping, hard spinning pitch once in a while. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Curve is low. Ball two. The Oakland A's are leading one to nothing. We're in the last half of the first inning. A jam-packed crowd and the weatherman must be a good baseball fan. It rained here for about a half hour before the first pitch, and as the first pitch was due to come, the rain stopped. Odom, who in one game this year made only 78 pitches in a 10-inning ball game. Fires to the plate. Ball three. He's behind Tolan 3-0 with Johnny Bench kneeling menacingly on deck. When you walk a Tolan or a Rose or a Morgan, sometimes it's like a double. Odom goes to the slider for his strike on a 3-0 pitch. It's 3-1 now. 
Odom actually has more confidence of throwing a strike with a slider than he does with his fastball, which moves all over the place. Now the right-hander from Macon, Georgia, comes to the plate. Swinging strike on another breaking ball. Tolan did not expect that one. He was way out front of it. Odom struck out 11 Cincinnati batters. Many of the Cincinnati club declared after that that they had expected Odom to throw more hard stuff. And another thing, it was a game that started at twilight at the Oakland Coliseum. Second time you see a pitcher, it's always easier for the batters. 3-2 pitch, change up, hit on the ground, right side of the infield. Gene Tennis charges it, underhands the ball to the pitcher, Odom covering, and the Reds go. In the first without any runs, they had a hit and left nobody on. After an inning of play, it's Oakland 1 and Cincinnati nothing. The second inning and Monty Moore. Here is Matty Alou, who has been a disappointment to himself at the plate. He is 1 for 21 in this series. Matty was a big factor in the A's late season drive. The pitch to him. Swing, a bouncing. Oh, but out over the mound in the air. And a throw to first from Concepcion. The shortstop gets him. Matty Yalou bunted that ball with a little half swing out over the pitcher's mound. With Concepcion playing him over to his right, Matty tried for the bunt hit. He got that a few times. And had this not have been artificial turf, he had a hit right there. The ball bounced right straight up where Concepcion, coming a long ways, was able to handle it. Now there's one out in here is Dave Duncan. That Concepcion is an outstanding shortstop. He made a play here yesterday from deep out of the hole where he's playing against Dave Duncan right now. He and Campy Campaneris have shown the world some tremendous throwing arms from deep short in this series. The pitch to Duncan, a curve outside from Billingham, ball one. Billingham had fallen straight over with his follow through and that butt by Alou was right over his head here's the 1-0 pitch Duncan takes in the dirt outside of all 2-0 Dave Duncan has a lot of power he hit 19 home runs during the course of the season 15 before the all-star break very fine handler of pitchers Duncan has grown the long hair he has the longest hair of any of the players in the A's ball club He's grown a full beard now. As this has been an image series, more or less, the Cincinnati Reds manager, Sparky Anderson, will not allow any facial hair to be grown like beards or mustaches. Duncan takes a fastball a little high. It's 3-0 and now. Billingham has not shown the real good control as yet. Duncan might get a hit sign here with the number eight batter coming up behind him, and he does have good power. 3-0 pitch to him. Outside ball four. With one out there is one on. And that play by Concepcion looms very big now. Here is Dick Green. Green, who had a disc operation on the back in April, came back to try to play for the A's in about three months' time. Was not really in top shape. The A's put him on the disabled list again for two weeks. He came back. And he has been the starting second baseman for the A's in the playoffs and now in the World Series, and Green has been outstanding in the field. He has had five hits at the plate. He's been up 14 times. That's a 357 batting average. Billingham throws. Green swings, bounces one, left field, base hit. Dave Duncan goes to second. He is going to hold on right there. So Green gets his sixth hit of the World Series. And now the pitcher, John Odom, who's one of the better hitting pitchers around, comes to the plate. And the bullpen of the Reds goes to work, and early in a game, when that happens, it is ordinarily number 34, Pedro Borbone, the rubber arm of the pen, and he is up throwing. This is a day whereby all pitchers are on the standby. There is no tomorrow. The next pitch any of these guys throw after today, unless some of them pitch in winter baseball, will be in spring training next year. So they don't have anything to save them for. Dave Duncan at second, Dick Green at first, one out in the second inning. Johnny Blue Moon Odom at the plate. Minky playing shallow at third. Here's a pitch. Odom bunts the ball in the air. Foul behind the plate. No play for Bench. It's going to take a good bunt to move them up. He's going to have to bunt the ball hard to Minky at third. Unless the Reds put on a shortstop over to third play. That is about the only way you might move him up. Duncan is not a fast runner at all. And he is the man on second base. 
Big hole at short. Concepcion is playing over near second to hold Duncan. Now Billingham down to the stretch. Here's the pitch. Odom squares around again. Bunts the ball. Foul behind the plate. Two strikes to count. Billingham threw him a curveball that time, which ordinarily is a good one to bunt. Dick Williams walking along the bench, talking to the players sitting there. He is a strong fundamentalist. He believes that when you go up to the plate and are asked to bunt the ball, you should be able to bunt it if you're in the major leagues. Plays, execution, fundamentals. Drilled and drilled and drilled by Williams. Let's see if they put the bunt on again on an 0-2 count. Here's the pitch. He squares around. Doesn't bunt. Throw down a second. They've got Duncan picked off. He's going to third now. Trying to get into a hang-up. Dick Green is going to second. And the throw goes to Morgan. Now over to third. They've still got Duncan. And Billingham is running him back. All he's got to do is tag him. He does. And they get him. Johnny Bench picks off Dave Duncan at second base. That is the easiest pickoff play in baseball for a catcher. With a man trying to bunt the ball, the runner at second has to get a good lead off second base to make it to third. So when he jumps off with a shortstop playing behind, it's an easy throw for a catcher. And they had Dave Duncan. The Reds did not execute that play very well, really, because they allowed Dick Green to make it to second base, and it took him a long time to run Duncan down. With Green standing on second base, all they had to do is run him back and tag one of the two players. They finally got in a rundown, and the pitcher made the tag out. So not only does Odom not bunt the man over, the man that was supposed to be bunted over is picked off second. Now with Green at second base, Odom at the plate, a one ball, two strike count, and now there are two away. Here's the pitch. Turner popped up behind the plate. Johnny Bench coming back near the screen. Does he have a play? He has, and he picks it off one-handed. Billingham got out of a tremendous jam here in the second inning, thanks to Johnny Bent. So the score after an inning and a half remains. Oakland won, Cincinnati nothing. Honesty, this is a fine World Series down to the seventh game, but Oldham's inability to bunt, and quite frankly, the Reds' inability to execute the uh, rundown play. The combination of the two got the Reds out of a lot of trouble. Jack Billingham had put them in when he walked Duncan on four pitches and gave up a single to Dick Green. So it's still one to nothing. And that one run came in as a result of a three-base error by Bobby Tolan. So the pressure's on. The score's one to nothing, Oakland. It's the second inning, and Mr. John Bench is up. And Bench busted one into the left field stands here yesterday on a three-ball, one-strike pitch to Vita Blue. And those of you who were listening yesterday might remember us saying that it didn't look to us as if it were that bad a pitch. And Vita Blue and the catcher Gene Tennis both said, no, it was a low fastball. Bench is just so strong he ripped it out. Here's Odom's pitch to Bench. Curve low and away, ball one. Bench has had six hits in the series, one a double and one a home run. He led the major leagues in homers this year with 40. He led the major leagues in runs batted in with 125. He is the complete player. A superstar of the game. Odom winds, kicks, and throws. Curveball line to the shortstop deep. Campanaris has got it. And there is one place where the artificial turf dictates an out instead of a hit. Because the shortstop was playing so deep, he could never have made that play had we been on regular turf because he'd have never been playing that deep. Here's Tony Perez with one out in the second inning. Perez has had a very fine series. With the bat, he's hitting 429. He leads all hitters in base hits with nine. Odom's pitch to him is a slow curve, and he got it over at the letters, a strike. Odom tough to pick up at times. He has a variety of wind-ups and wind-up motions. He kicks high sometimes, curls the leg others. Here's the pitch, a change-up, hit up into the air in a deep left field. Joe Rudy at the wall. He's run out of track, but he's coming in a step, and he's got it. Tony Perez just missed one. Odin threw him the change-up, and Perez was looking for it. He got under the ball a bit, and having to provide all of his own power, he just didn't have that much power. So there are two down, and Odom hasn't fooled the first two batters here in the second inning. Here's Dennis Menke.
Joe Rudy, who peeled one off the wall here last Sunday for one of the most spectacular catches in World Series history. Had an easy catch that time. Here's Dennis Menke. Low and away with Odom's fastball. Menke's had only two hits in the series, but as Jim was saying to sign on, he's been one of the unsung defensive heroes. He's made a lot of tough plays look mighty easy over at third base. A right-handed batter. He was a big bonus player, about a $125,000 bonus player in the Milwaukee Braves organization. The pitch to him. Bouncing ball to Bando. Comes off the carpet right straight at him. He throws over to first tennis. Calls it in, and after two innings of play at Riverfront Stadium, the score is Oakland 1, Cincinnati nothing. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. Next weekend, it's Halloween Hullabaloo at Candlewick Lake. There'll be fun for the whole family. Bump for apples and join in the big pumpkin carving contest with free pumpkins for all the kids. And a big costume contest. Cider and donuts, too. It's all free. So come to Candlewick Lake next weekend for the big Halloween Hullabaloo. Just take I-90 to the General Road exit toward Belvedere and follow the signs to Candlewick Lake. That's Halloween Hullabaloo. WMAQ, Chicago. Reds have not seen a whole lot of the Oakland A's speed. Campanaris has led this American League six of the last eight years in stolen bases. The A's activated a pinch-running specialist, Alan Lewis, when Reggie Jackson was injured. But Johnny Bench has shot them both down at least once in this series, trying to steal second base. It's been the kind of a series where stolen bases have been a factor. The pitch to Campanera swung on it. A chopper passed the mound. On comes Menke. Menke picks it up, throws the first. He got him on another close play at first. And Jerry Adair, the first base coach of Oakland, is screaming at Jim Honacek. Here comes Dick Williams out for the second time to charge the American League umpire. Menke crossing behind the mound in front of the shortstop. Throws the first. And in watching the replay, it's still hard to tell. Dick Williams talking with his first base coach, Jerry Adair, and he's having to shove him away from Hanachik. Dick Williams going to play it cool. He'd hate to be kicked out of a World Series game. Sparky Anderson was kicked out of one of the playoff games early against the Pittsburgh Pirates. So Campanaris is out number one here in the third inning. Boy, a couple of bang-bang plays at first base. Another sparkling play by Menke. He was playing deep and had to charge that slow hopper past the mound. He got in front of Concepcion and fired a strike over to Perez. Here's Angel Manguel, who hit one deep in the right center field. Tolan misplayed the ball. And Manguel turned it into a three-base error. There's a high fly ball hit into the air around the A's dugout. Minke is over, watching it go into the seats. One strike count on the A's center fielder. George Hendrick played the first five games in center field. Manguel was put in the lineup yesterday and is starting today again. One strike pitch to him, a curve in the dirt outside, one and one. Dillingham's record was 12 wins and 12 losses this year. But the Reds tell you that he won some mighty big ball games for them. Here's the 1-1 pitch, curve ball, taken low, it's 2-1. and one. The Reds, during the course of the season, have never had... More than 25 pitchers go all the way. Out of 160-something games, there's not been a pitcher go all the way in a World Series this year. There's a little looper out of behind the second baseman. Morgan goes back. He's got it. Morgan playing very deep, got back, and took the pop-up off the bat of Manguel. There are two down. 
The A's have one run, two hits. They have not made an error. The Reds, no runs, one hit, and they've made one error. Two out, third inning. Here's Joe Rudy. The A's left fielder in the World Series has had six hits. He's been up 23 times. One of his hits, a home run. Dillingham comes to the plate. Rudy fouls it down. Strike one. A letter high fastball to Joe. In every World Series, there's always one umpire who seems to be in the middle of every controversy. And in this series, it has been Jim Honacek. To show you the integrity of the umpires, all three of the close calls he's made have gone against the American League A's. Hot smash to Minke at third. Up with it cleanly, throwing to first. The A's go one, two, three here in the third. Well, after two and a half innings, the score remains Oakland one, Cincinnati nothing. As we prepare to begin the third inning, I think it might be safe to give a little weather forecast here. As we came on the area, it was raining, had been raining for half an hour, and uh, it's clear, although rain is expected later on. But as this game charges on, Monty, it seems clear that we're going to have an official seventh World Series game, and somebody will go home the winner. These pitchers both work fast. They neither one walk a lot of people ordinarily. And as we mentioned, Odom pitched one game this year, a 10-inning affair in which he made only 78 pitches. It was the only time, of course, that he's ever done that and one of the fewest number of pitches in a ball game in the history of the big leagues. Here is Cesar Geronimo, left-handed batter up, and Odom's first pitch to him is a fastball just missing inside, 1-0. and Geronimo in this World Series has been at the plate 16 times. He has had three base hits. Odom's pitch coming in high. It's 2 and 0. Oh. Oakland leading 1 to nothing on Gene Tennis's bad hop base hit over third baseman Dennis Menke. Odom now has a 2 and 0 oh count. Needs a strike. Swings into the windup. Here's the pitch. Bouncing ball hit towards first. Nice stop by Gene Tennis. He's going to the bag and beats his man there. Gene Tennis playing a little bit out of position, though he has played first base in the minor leagues quite a bit. He has played first base a little bit for the Oakland A's this year. He was playing near the foul line for the left-handed hitter and took that bouncer as it went off the carpet, across the dirt, and then back onto the carpet again. There's one out, and here is Dave Concepcion, the shortstop. A unique confrontation right now, numbers-wise, if you're one of those freaks. Concepcion, the only player in the National League that wears number 13, and Johnny Odom, the pitcher facing him, wearing number 13. Slider calls strike right at the knees to Concepcion. Right-handed batters had a good series. Four hits and ten at-bats. He ordinarily is platooned with Daryl Cheney, but today Sparky Anderson has him against the right-hander starting. Curve is low, a ball. One of his four hits in this series was against a right-handed pitcher. An outstanding shortstop. Sparky wanted a little bit more speed in the lineup today. Odom's 1-1 pitch. Curve. High. Ball two. The Reds have one hit so far off Odom. An infield hit hotly contested at first base by Pete Rose. But the next man, Joe Morgan, hit into a double play. A 2-1 pitch. Low, it's ball three. Dave Duncan got the starting call today for the A's. Behind the plate. He's an excellent handler of pitchers. He knows the A's pitching staff well. He was Oakland's starting catcher through most of this season. About a month from the end of the season, Dave was in a hitting slump, and they put tennis in behind the plate, and he kept the job. 3-1 pitch, a changeup, hit up into the air in a left field. Joe Rudy backing up just a little, and he's got it. And these Reds players are taking some pretty good pops at Odom's off-speed pitches today. They're seeing him for the second time now in a week. Perez and Concepcion have both hit high fly balls to Joe Rudy. Now here's the pitcher, Jack Billingham, with two down. It's one to nothing, open leading. 
Wherever you might be listening in around the world, we hope you're enjoying this World Series broadcast presented on NBC. And a great series it has been. Billingham at the plate. Hold him to him. Missing low, ball one. And John's throwing a lot of pitches here this afternoon. Billingham is big enough to hit that ball. Angel Manguel, the A's right fielder, uh, center fielder, is playing closer to right than center. Pitch is low to Billingham, ball two. He has a big strike zone. Billingham is about 6'3", 6'4". And Odom has missed low to him twice. 2-0 pitch. Missed low. No, he got that one. I'm sorry. Pelicutis gave us that slow shot. Billingham has had 21 hits, 222 at bat for the year. Swinging strike two. He didn't come too close to that one. Odom threw him a slider then. It's two balls, two strikes now. The Moon Man, as the A's players call John Odom. Cranks it up and throws. Again, the breaking ball, and Billingham strikes out. So we go to the top half of the fourth inning in another low-scoring game. It's Oakland 1, Cincinnati nothing. Hello, I'm John. From Cincinnati with Monty Moore, this is Jim Simpson. There's only been one run scored in this ball game, And again, for those of you who may not have heard, with one out in the first, Manguel lined a shot to center field. Bobby Tolan charged it only to have it go off his glove for a three-base error. Manguel was left at third base, and Rudy fly to short... Left field, but then tennis bounced a single off Menke's glove, and that's the one run unearned of the ball game. As we go to the fourth, and Monty. Gene Tennis standing at the plate. He's batting cleanup here this afternoon, and Dick Williams shaking up lineup. Billingham pitches. He hangs a curve right on that inside corner for a call strike. This is the 28th time in World Series history that the series has gone at least seven games. Several of them went eight games back in the early 1900s. The 0 1 pitch, curveball to tennis, same place, same result, strike two call. This is the eighth seven game series out of the last 12, which means the two leagues best in those 12 years have played it close. The 0 2 pitch showed him the fast ball after two curves and missed outside with it. It's one ball and two strikes now to tennis. He'll be followed here. And this is the fourth inning by Sal Bando and Matty Elvu. Curve again. He struck him out swinging, and Bellingham must have an excellent breaking ball today because the A's players, Bando and now Tennis, have chased bad ones way outside for strikeouts. That is his second strikeout, both on the same kind of a pitch. He had gone to the inside with two breaking balls on Tennis and really had him set up. Then he went back outside. Here now is Sal Bando. And the pitch. Bando tried to bunt that ball for the base hit, and it fouled off strike one. He has Minky playing very deep. The way that Johnny Bench comes out from behind that plate, like a sprinter off the starting blocks, you've got about a pretty good bunt here, even with Minky playing deep to get on. Pitch to Bando. Fastball hit hard to Minky. Short hops it. Fine play. Throws to first. He got him. Menke sucks up another tough one over behind third base. It was a short hop. He charged the ball and made the throw. There are two down in the fourth, and here is Matty Alou, the only player on either team, a regular who hasn't struck out in the series. And the sun is broken out here in Cincinnati. The pitch, Matty takes slow, a ball. When a player has only one hit in the series and something like 22 at-bats, you try to find something good, and our statistician at NBC, Alan Roth, has. Patty is the only player who hasn't struck out. There are two down, and bright sunshine pops out of the clouds here. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Fastball misses outside, 2-0, and Billingham's really moving that ball around here today. The Oakland A's have two base hits. The Reds have one. The 2-0 pitch. Fastball hits sharply towards right. Cut off by the deep playing Morgan at second. He throws him out. So it's three up, three down in the fourth inning, and the score remains. Oakland one, Cincinnati nothing. Schmidt.
the dry look. Oh. Mike Bofolco, wedhead. I don't believe it. Mike Bofolco, the dry look. I believe it. But people do seem to notice an improvement when a guy switches to the dry look. The aerosol hair control from Gillette. You should try it if you haven't already. Comes regular or extra hold. Joe Lamarco, wethead. Ick. Joe Lamarca, the dry look. Fantastic. The dry look from Gillette. Does shaving leave your neck rough and irritated? If it does, let me tell you about a special kind of Gillette foamy. Face Saver, specially made for you roughnecks. Face Saver has 25% more lubricants than any other foamy shave cream. Or better protection against shaving irritation, even on the most sensitive part of your face, your neck. Because shaving irritates your neck, get foamy face saver for the roughnecks. We go to the fourth inning. The applause, this is almost like a football stadium. Tenants are waving. They are standing because Pete Rose, and that means he'll be followed by Joe Morgan and Bobby Tolan, are due up in the fourth against John Blue Moon Odom. And these are the three men that get the Reds' offense going. Rose preparing to step in. Odom nursing a slim one unearned run to none lead steps back on the mound. We begin the fourth under sunlight. There have been a lot of interesting sidelights in this World Series, such as the A's mustaches and short hair, or long hair against the Reds' short hair. It has also developed into a pennant waving contest between the Oakland fans who started it in Oakland. And now the Reds fans have broken out the pennant. Here is Pete Rose. Johnny Odom winds, kicks that white shoe in the air, and throws a fastball a little low. It's 1-0. and oh. The top of the Reds batting order, Rose, Morgan, and Tolan. Due to bat here in the last half of the fourth inning. Sal Bendo playing a shallow third base. Here's the pitch. Low to Rose, and he's looking him over. It's two balls and no strikes. Signs all over the place here. The fans in Oakland and the fans in Cincinnati have both been tremendous throughout this entire thing. The 2-0 pitch. There's a drive in the right center field deep. Manuel is going back and reaches up and picks it off over his head. Angel Manuel playing center field. All that went in after it looked as if he might have misjudged that ball for a moment. It sort of was twisting off the left-hander's bat away from right field back towards center. Manguel had broken to his left and went back. He caught that ball, and Jim, the sun is out. I don't know where the sun might be as far as the sun field. I suppose it is left field right now. So there's one out in the fourth, and Rose really put some temper on that one. Here's Joe Morgan. Bando comes in even more shallow at third for him. Dick Green is playing a very deep second base. Odom's high leg kick. The curve high. A ball. Morgan ran up on the ball as if he wanted to bunt it. With the third baseman playing shallow and the shortstop deep. And Odom, the pitcher, the kind of a pitcher who falls off in his follow through towards the first base line. It looked like a speedy left handed batter might be able to punch that ball by the mound curve. Misses low and away. It's two balls and no strikes, and Odom has been behind both first two batters. Pitching is a much tougher job when you're working from behind. You've got to give in a little bit to keep from walking them. Remember that Morgan led the major leagues in getting free passes this year. 115 were doled out to him during the National League season. He's had five in the World Series. Odom's 2-0 and pitch. Swinging strike, he threw him a slider. Morgan slams his hand onto the end of his bat, disgusted. Rose took a big cut at a 2-0 pitch and drove Manguel 400 feet to the wall to haul in the drive. Morgan wanted to do the same. For a walking man and a speedster, Morgan is very powerful. He hit 16 home runs this year. The 2-1 pitch, bat ball misses inside. It is now 3-1. The foul lines here at Riverfront Stadium, 330 feet. And the power alleys, 375. 404 to the base of the wall in center. Now Odom has one of his biggest pitches of the game so far. It is three and one. The pitch on the way. He let up and walked him. And now 
the excitement begins in earnest here. The A's game plan, of course, is to try to keep Morgan and Tolan off the bases. Now that Morgan is on, you can almost bet that at some time he'll be running. Dave Duncan has not been behind the plate for the A's in this series, and the Reds have run rampant. Eleven stolen bases. Now Duncan is going to be challenged, possibly, by Morgan. One out, one on. And the A's bullpen goes to work. The first sign of trouble. And Jim Hunter, a right-hander, gets up and goes to the bullpen. Morgan gets that big lead at first. Tennis holding against him. John Odom has a good move. Morgan's got a big lead. Odom looks at him, throws, and just lobs the ball. Not his good move at all. Now Green and Campanaris have shortened up a little bit at second and short. Somebody's got to go cover. Tolan doesn't always take a lot of pitches for Morgan. Who has scored from first on a single in the series already. He's leaning. He draws another throw from Odom. It's a lob throw. In a big game in Oakland. Morgan at first base with a walk. Two down. Broke towards second base. Tolan swung and hit a little looper out in the right center field. And since Morgan was going, and the outfielders of the A's didn't get to it, he scored from first base on a single. He's got a big leaning off first base, and Odom steps off the rubber. He's going to give Morgan something to think about. Morgan is giving Odom plenty to think about. Isn't it amazing what a simple walk can do to turn on a ball club? He's a throw to first, and his good move was not in time. Odom with a quick throw over to Gene Tennis, and Morgan had to hit the dirt to get back in. There's a cutout area on the carpet around all the bases. It stretches to about eight feet off first base, and Morgan plants one foot in the dirt, one up on the artificial turf. Odom drops down to the waist. Tolan cocks the bat. Throw to first again. Morgan dives back in head first. Odom has made five throws to first and none to the plate yet. Fish Hunter in the Oakland bullpen. This is for all the marbles. And they made these marbles out of pure gold. Morgan, a big lead at first again. Odom takes a shot at him. He is safe, but Tennis shoved him off the bag, the umpire says. Morgan got back on the bag, and Tennis shoved him off. He didn't slide back in there that time. He took it a little too casually, and Tennis put a catcher's block on him. Dolan still hasn't had a pitch. A lot of throws to first will intimidate some race runners and encourage others to go. Odom holding, bobbing his head up and down, throws again, and Morgan goes back in at first. The game is out at the plate. The game is at first base right now. A runner like that can destroy the concentration of a pitcher. When he finally does make a pitch to the plate, a lot of times it is not the same kind of a pitch he'd make were it not for the runner at first. Blue Moon drops down to the waist again, throws again, and it's close this time, but he didn't get him. Now Bobby Tolan's going to give his teammate a little time to put himself back together. He's going over to the on-deck area. Going to doctor his bat up. With the rousing bag, and Chris Bellacutas, the plate umpire, is coming over to get him. Dolan is standing with his back to the umpire, paying no attention at all. Dolan knows what it means to have about seven or eight throws at you at first base because he's a base burglar himself. So he is giving Morgan time to regroup, so to speak. A one to nothing game. The Oakland A's are leading Cincinnati with one out in the fourth inning. A walk. 
to Joe Morgan has just turned the full concentration of the baseball game 90 feet away from home plate over to first. They're set. Here's the pitch outside of all. And the Cincinnati crowd is roaring. One ball, no strikes to count on Tolan with Joe Morgan almost a cinch to go if there are three or four pitches made to the plate on one of them. Has got a big lead. Draws a throw in the dirt. Tennis smothers it. He blocked it nicely. As he came up with the ball, he sort of rolled over on Morgan again. We've had some hard tags and hard blocks in this series. Al McCray knocked Dick Green almost into the left field stands on a double play takeout in Oakland. Yesterday, Sal Bando tagged Bobby Tolan at third base hard and shoved him off the bag. Tennis shoved Morgan off here today. Now Odom gets ready to pitch or throw to first again. Here's the pitch. There goes Morgan. It's taken. Throw down to second base. Out at second. Dave Duncan shoots Morgan down. Duncan in his first test as a thrower in this series. Shot down Morgan, who got a good jump. The throw was high and outside to Duncan. An easy one to handle. Morgan gets a cheer from the crowd behind the Cincinnati dugout just for going. One or two throws like that can mean a lot here today. Dick Williams, knowing that Duncan is a more experienced catcher than Gene Tennis, and a good team leader shook the lineup up today to put him behind the plate to handle Johnny Odom. Here's the 2 and 0 to Tolan. Swing and a miss, a strike on a slider that was eaten up the inside of the plate. Two down and nobody on. Tolan the batter, Johnny Bench on deck. One to nothing, the Oakland A's are leading. Here's Odom's pitch to Tolan. High pop foul out of play into the stands it goes. Duncan giving token chase, but that's back in souvenir country. So it is two balls and two strikes. The Reds defeated the Pittsburgh Pirates in their best five-game series. The A's beat the Detroit Tigers in a five-game playoff series. Baseball's best year ever for sheer excitement. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Pop foul out of play. Odom hit him right on the fist with a slider. The entire nation was really turned on by baseball during the playoffs. The games were all televised. They were coast to coast. They were great games, a lot of excitement, and a lot at stake. The 2-2 pitch, outside ball three to Tolan, and Odom could ask for a lot more trouble if he throws another bad one to this guy. Tolan grounded out to Gene Tennis, his first time up in the game. Now the A's right-hander cuts loose. Change up. Ball four, he walked him. And now Bobby Tolan will be doing much the same as Morgan, I would imagine. They've got to have some trouble now ahead because Johnny Bench is at the plate. And if you start thinking fastball to keep Tolan from stealing, you've got to think 40 home runs by Johnny Bench. Probably many of them hit off fastballs. Tolan. A fast runner. Stole 42 bases this year. He's digging himself a little hole off first base. In this series, Stolen has swiped five and six tries. The only time the A's got him, they got him on a pitch out. He doesn't have too big a lead compared to Morgan. Here's the pitch. Bench takes a slider over the outside corner for a call strike. I don't know how much they would run with Bench at the plate. As I understand the Cincinnati Ball Club, they run just any time and all the time. 
But with a home run hitter at the plate, they might run just a little bit less. Odom turns, throws to first with a quick move, and the ball is dropped by tennis. I'll tell you this, the first baseman really has to be on the alert at first with Odom on the mound because he fires over there. Tolan darting off first. Here's the pitch. High and inside. Bench almost got hit. In any sport, I don't think anything excites fans like speed. In basketball, the little guy who can run and dribble around everybody. In football, the little halfback who takes the long kickoffs back. In baseball, the little men who run on the bases. And these two men, Morgan and Tolan, have really turned on 50,000 here today. Jumping around at first base, Tolan draws another throw from tennis. And I'll tell you this. Jim Tennis is playing first base like a catcher catching a wild pitcher. He's blocking everything down on his knees. He's not going to let that ball get away from him if he can help it. Now Tolan's complaining to Jim Hanachik over there, I believe, about the body contact on the plays and the bases. One ball and one strike on the major leagues. Long tater champion, Johnny Bench. Tolan leaning back towards first. He is not going to pitch. Swung on and popped up. Towards the stand. Bando may have a play on it. It's coming down near the dugout. Campaneras and Bando are there. Bando picks it off right over the head of Campaneras. Johnny Bench had a big home run cut and an inside slider and popped it up. So a lot of excitement. A big scare but no score for the Reds. It is Oakland 1, Cincinnati nothing. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. Next weekend, it's Halloween Hullabaloo at Candlewick Lake. There'll be fun for the whole family. Bob for apples and join in the big pumpkin carving contest with free pumpkins for all the kids. And a big costume contest. Cider and donuts, too. It's all free. So come to Candlewick Lake next weekend for the big Halloween Hullabaloo. Just take I-90 to the General Road exit toward Belvedere and follow the signs to Candlewick Lake. That's Halloween Hullabaloo, WMAQ Chicago. Top of the fifth, Riverfront Stadium, Cincinnati, one to nothing. The unearned run in the first inning by the Oakland A's on a free base error by Bobby Tolan, an infield hit off the bat of Gene Tennis. It'll be Dave Duncan to face Jack Billingham, and here's Monty Moore. Duncan ready for the first pitch, and here it is—a curveball dropped in there for a strike. And Billingham's big pitch here today has been the breaking ball. He's known as a sinker ball pitcher, but today he has had an outstanding curve. One strike pitch. There it is again, and Duncan reaches out over the plate and yanks it foul by third. No balls, two strikes. It is one to nothing. Oakland leading in the championship game of the 1972 World Series. One that has been marked by outstanding defense, outstanding pitching, and really a lack of hitting. The 0-2 pitch. Curve, swinging, strike three, he got him. Billingham strikes out Duncan with that big jug. That is his third strikeout. All right-handed batters and all chasing curves. Here now is Dick Green, Oakland's second baseman, who got a gap single in the second inning between short and third. It was right after that that John Odom, trying to bunt the ball, failed to, and they picked off Duncan. And a big play. Dick Green took a... Big swing at a curve and fouled it off the end of the bat, strike one. Johnny Bench, after Odom missed the bunt, fired to second, and they got Duncan in a rundown. One strike pitch. Curveball bounce to the third baseman. Menke knocks this one down, chases it, picks it up, throws it over to first, and he pulls for his off the bag. He tags him going by. Menke with his first failure to come up with a ball cleanly on that backhanded grab near the foul line. Now Dick Green talking with Hanacek briefly. That throw by Menke pulled Perez off the bag. Had Green have known that, he could have hit the dirt and been under it. But he's running hard not knowing what's going on. Now two down, nobody on, and here is Johnny Odom. The A's have not had a runner since Green single in the second. Odom takes a look at a knee-high fastball that's in there. Strike one.
These two pitchers, Odom of the A's and Billingham of the Reds, have come the closest to pitching a complete game in the series. Swinging strike two. That great curveball of Billingham's is something to see today. Billingham pitched eight innings and Odom seven when last they met. In a one nothing game, there's a swinging strike three on another curve. So we've gone halfway here at Riverfront Stadium. The score, Oakland one, Cincinnati nothing. And now here to carry us through to the end of this championship game of the World Series, NBC's Jim Simpson. All right, Marty, it is Tony Perez who hit an Odom change deep to left, and Rudy had to go to the warning track to haul it in in the second inning. Up to lead off the fifth. Catfish Hunter warmed for about five minutes for the A's, and Pedro Bobon of Cincinnati went briefly down to the bullpen for the Cincinnati Reds. Sun is out. Rain is expected here, according to this morning's forecast, after 3 this afternoon. Cincinnati time. It is currently almost 2.15 here. Perez, big, strong, right-handed batter with more hits than anybody else in the series with nine. Takes a fastball on the outside corner. And Odom. Odom was pitching from behind in much of the fourth inning. Went to 3-1 and one and walked Joe Morgan and then threw about six or seven times over to first after him. Went to 3-2 and two on Tolan before... Walking him, Perez takes a big cut at an off-speed pitch from Odom. John loves to chain speeds. Monty has told you he also delivers from many different varieties of style and wind-up. Out in front of Perez, 0-2. Likes to throw the breaking pitch and throws a curve off-speed that stays inside. One ball, two strikes. One and two to Perez. Menke is on deck. Odom ready. Throws the fastball and misses outside. And it's two balls, two strikes to Perez. Reds had a chance in the first with Rose on at first, but Morgan hit into a double play. And when you get walks to Morgan and Tolan back to back and get out of that, that was something that Odom and the A's did in the fourth. Seldom happens. 2-2 to Perez. Comes back with a breaking pitch line down the left field line. That ball is fair ball into the corner. Rudy goes in to dig it out. Perez heads for second base and is in with a stand-up double. That's only the second hit of John Blue Moon Odom. And that'll get the A's bullpen busy again. Menke is up. Menke did a superb job. Earlier here, yesterday, with a man at second base, a leadoff man, he moved him over to third base with an infield out and allowed Concepcion's long fly ball to score. It. Kenny Holtzman has gotten up now, the left-hander, to join Catfish Hunter, who was up and throwing before. Bando has walked over to talk to Odom and also give Holtzman and Hunter a chance to throw. That's some bullpen in it. Hunter won 21, Holtzman 19. Yes, and that's a typical seventh uh, game of a World Series bullpen right there. Mankey's big job is, well, if he can score Perez, but certainly get him over to third base. One to nothing to score. There are no out in the last of the fifth. Autumn throws a breaking pitch. It's a strike. One strike to Mankey, who looks down to Alex Gramis, coaching at third base for his side. Mando, at the moment, is about even with the bag at third. Time is called by Mel Steiner at second base, and Dick Green says, hold it. That don't mean anything. So Steiner says, go ahead and play. Autumn from the stretch. Throws another breaking pitch. This one just misses outside. Duncan holds the ball there for the moment, hoping that Chris Bellacutis, invariably is very slow to call the pitches, would change his mind. Campanaris has come on now to talk to Odom as Holtzman and Hunter continue to throw. Jim, those two pitchers have both been outside, and if Menke's looking for something to move the man over, that's exactly where Odom was throwing the ball. Campanaris might want him changed a little bit there. Odom ready, back with the pitch that's down low, and it's two balls, one strike to Menke. 
three games to three in the 1972 World Series. It will end here today. At the moment, the A's lead one to nothing with none out of the tying run. Tony Perez down at second base. And Dennis Menke with a count of two and one. Tony Perez, no matter what happens today, will go home that having hit safely in every game of the World Series. The 20th time a player has hit safely in all seven games. That was his 10th base hit of this series. Breaking pitch. That gets the corner. And it's two balls, two strikes to Menke. Menke grounded the bando and his only other time up in this game. He is two for 21. One of those two was a home run and he has moved men around and has played exceptionally well at third base. Autumn throws and there's a ground ball foul off the hands of Alex Gramis, third base coach, and picked up in the half of one of the Oakland A's who leans over the railing from his dugout. Still two balls, two strikes. They're playing Menke, if anything, slightly toward right field. Although Concepcion is pulled around in the hole, love to have a play at third base if the ball is hit to him there. Autumn again is ready. The 2-2 pitch is a breaking pitch, foul back toward us. has not moved very far from second base. Hunter, the right-hander, Holtzman, the left-hander, continue to throw. Autumn with a new baseball. In the stretch. Long way. Now delivers a fastball down low, blocked by Duncan. Perez can't go anywhere. Oh, we've done out in present second. We've gone to the full count on Dennis Menke with the left-hander, Cesar Geronimo, standing on deck. I would imagine that both Dick Williams and Sparky Anderson, as they came to the ballpark today, were just hoping to get as many as five innings out of Odom or out of Billingham. They have done their job. It has been a superbly pitched ball game. Autumn ready with a 3-2, throws a breaking pitch, strike three. Menke started to check his swing, Telecuda says it got the outside corner. Big out there for the reason that Perez does not advance to third base with less than two out. He remains at second, and here is Geronimo. Geronimo with a count of 2-0 and oh on him, leading off the third last one at Gene Tennis, the catcher who today is playing at first base. He knocked it down, raced over, and tagged the bag. Dick Williams is coming out. And it might be, among other things, Monty, that he wants to remind Odom and Duncan of the kind of pitch that Geronimo really got around on and blasted at tennis at first base back in that third inning. Yes, and he had a big hit uh, in one of the early games that Cincinnati won, too, drove in the winning run of a ball game, and the A's all know what it was. It was a high fastball. <laughs> Uh, it's just a kind of a pitch that, uh, that they hit. And again, Dick Green is checked with Campy Campaneros. To see whether or not they come to third base. Rudy is playing Geronimo to hit the other way. He's very near that line and left. Bando has come in. Fastball blocked beautifully by Dave Duncan, and we've seen a couple of examples now why the A's say Duncan is their best fielding catcher. He has thrown out the speedy Joe Morgan at second base attempting to steal, and he has blocked a couple of good pitches. Jim, it was Geronimo who got the base hit off Odom, driving in Perez in that one to nothing game they pitched before. 1-0. Autumn's got a good look at Perez. Now comes back to the plate. The fastball is inside. 2-0 and now to Geronimo, who looks down to Alex Gramlitz. That was the seventh inning of that ball game in which Perez fell as he came around third base, but got up to come on and score the only run of the game. Billingham beat Odom in that one, one to nothing. Odom leads Billingham in this one, one to nothing. In the last of the fifth. 
Autumn ready, his pitch is outside, and he's gone 3-0 to Geronimo with Concepcion on deck. Hunter and Holtzman continue their activity, and now we have activity down in the Reds' bullpen. Looks like Pedro Bourbon has gone down there again. The Reds get something going. It's a cinch. Billingham is gone, and Bourbon comes on. 3-0 pitch, and he's taking all the way. It's low ball four. That is the third walk given up by John Blue Moon Odom. Duncan walks out. Campanaris has come in. Concepcion is coming up. And Dick Williams has not yet come out of the Oakland dugout. Situation is this. We are in the fifth of a one nothing ball game. Perez let off with a stand-up double deep in the left field corner. Menke looked at a breaking pitch for call strike three. Geronimo has just walked on four pitches. And now Concepcion, who hit a change to medium center field back in the third inning, steps in. Williams did not come out of the A's dugout. Well, the tying and go-ahead runs are on the bases in the last of the fifth. There's one out. Concepcion has driven in a couple of runs and scored a couple in this World Series. And he is four for 11. Gets a curveball. It's on the inside corner. Strike one. Odom has had the pitch with pressure. The deciding game of the American League Championship playoffs against Detroit. The seventh game of the World Series. The strike one pitch. Back with a fastball. Low and away again and again. Duncan blocks. One ball, one strike. It rained for a half an hour before this game began, but again, we'll remind you, there is a breeze, stiff breeze, blowing toward left, and the sun is out. Back with the pitch, it's low and away again, it's two and one. Now Dick Williams comes out. Those last pitches after walking Geronimo on four pitches. And Duncan has had to really block those last two saving Perez from moving to third and Geronimo to second, and that may be enough. With a control pitcher like Catfish Hunter in the bullpen, and he has been warming sufficiently. And this might dictate a change by Sparky Anderson, too. With Hunter coming on, he could pinch hit Cheney right here. I don't know how they think, but sometimes he could do that. One thing I'm sure that's causing the change here is in watching Odom. In this situation, ordinarily, when you want the double play ball, he throws that good hard sinker. But he's been throwing almost all breaking balls. He threw about six of them to Menke and finally got him. But he's throwing that breaking ball. He's not throwing it real sharp here right now. And Dick wants somebody in there who can make sure that he doesn't walk anybody over. So both managers have made pitching changes in this series at critical stages of the game. With a count like 3-0, and he brought in, uh, Sparky Anderson brought in Clay Carroll on a 3-0 and count one time. He brought Carroll in again with a 2-0 and count, or 2-1. and one. John Odom goes into the A's dugout and gets the handshake of all of his teammates. He has done a job. Jim mentioned that uh, Odom has pitched the pressure games, the fifth game of the playoffs, and here the seventh game, and he's had to do it with a lot of pressure, too, because the A's were not scoring in either one of those ball games. Today, here, it's just one to nothing. And this has been a typical Oakland pitcher's plight the last month. The ball club has not scored very many runs. And today, the A's are playing without their two top home run hitters. Mike Epstein, who is benched for this game, and Reggie Jackson, who is out with an injury. So when you take those two bats out of the lineup, you're taking out 51 home runs and about 145 RBIs. So the pitching staff has had extra pressure in these pressure games. Jim Catfish Hunter led the American League in percentage of wins this year, 75%. He was 21-7. and seven. Had 16 complete games. Started the second game of the series, went eight and two-thirds innings, and won that ball game, giving up just a run. 
Then he started a game later on at Oakland. Lasted but four and a third innings in that one. That was the fifth game of the series and gave up three runs and five hits, struck out two and walked two. And now Hunter is in his third World Series with a 2.75 earn run average. And in 13 and a third innings, he has given up four runs and 11 hits. A control pitcher, he comes in with a 2-1 count to Concepcion. Perez at second, Geronimo at first and one out. One to nothing to score. Oakland, we're in the last of the fifth. Hunter from the stretch. Throws his first pitch and it's outside and it's three balls, one strike. Concepcion now will take a look at Alex Ramos. Does he have the green light? Rose is on deck. Billingham is the man due to bat. Rorbon continues to throw. And you can bet something happens here barring a double play. We won't see Billingham, one of the worst hitting players on the club. On her back and throws down low, and he has walked the base and loaded. And that will send Sparky Anderson to his bet to bring up a left hander if he can. Ulander or Haig, they have not poked their heads out of there yet. And now Ted Ulander has a bat. We've seen him disappear. Ulander had a pinch double earlier. Egg is another left-hander in there. And Jim, looking at the lineup cards, we could really see some changing here. If the left-hander Ulander comes out of there, Dick Williams might go to his left-hander out of the bullpen. And that is Kenny Holtzman. But then... Sparky Anderson would have his top pinch hitter, right-handed batting Hal McRae to come out then. We pause here 30 seconds for station identification. Has come out, and money. that means that Sparky Anderson had the wheels turning, figuring just what you said, that if they sent out a U-Lander or a Hague, they might see Holtzman. Right, and uh, the thing is, McRae has hit that ball awfully hard in the series, and twice he's hit it against right-handed pitchers. So I would imagine a guy like him, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Hunter, a right-hander, still got to make a good pitch, and you can bet on one thing. McRae will be up there swinging. Now, well, McRae, as we've described to you throughout the series, calls himself the offensive player. He said, don't judge me on defense, judge me on offense. And in the series, he is 4 for 9, and that's a 444 average. He comes up with the bases loaded and one out. The Reds trailing 1 to nothing in the last of the fifth of the seventh World Series game. Jim Catfish Hunter. Ready, pitching from the stretch now. It is hit high and deep to center field. Manguel is back near the wall and has it in front of the wall, but tagging from third base with a tying run is Perez. It's one to one. Steps in with two out now. Geronimo still at second. Concepcion at first. They're throwing streamers here. They haven't won it yet, but the Reds fans have been waiting for some kind of run. Now streamers bounce on the field out of left field. Time will be called for that. And lost in the shuffle is the fine pitching job that Jack Billingham has done. He worked five innings, return, uh, retiring the last ten men in a row. He allowed no earned runs at all. Only two base hits. Struck out four and walked one. The Reds score another run. He could be a winning pitcher. He can't lose it now. Rose fouls the first one back off the screen. Strike one. Rose beat out an infield hit to Green at shortstop. And a very close play called by Hunter Chick at first base. That was in the first inning. And then he sent Manuel deep to the warning track 400 feet away in the fourth. He's one for two. Hunter ready. Ball is hit deep to center field. Manuel goes back to the warning track again near the fence. Stands there and has it at the wall. McRae and Rose have driven them deep. It's a one-to-one -one ball game. They've gone five innings, but you can't call it official yet because it's all tied up. And rains are due in about an hour. 
One big run scores on just one base hit. The leadoff double by Perez. No errors, two men left at the end of five. Oakland one, Cincinnati one. Starting pitchers allow only two hits in their work, and they are gone. That's what the seventh game of a World Series is all about. The A's got their run in the first inning when Manguel drilled one over the head of center fielder Bobby Tolan, who made an error on the play. Tennis then knocked him in. The Reds got theirs in the fifth when Tony Perez, the leading hitter in the series with ten hits now, led off with a double. Odom got Minky on a strikeout, but then Geronimo, with a count of 2-0, and was pitched to by Jim Hunter. He walked him. The walk charged to Odom. And then McCray drove in the tying run, and Rose almost knocked in three more. Jim? Honey, this is the seventh game of the World Series. This is the sixth game at Pedro Bourbon. Has pitched in. He's come on and will face the top of the batting order. Campy Campanaros leads it off, and there's a curveball. He starts it with, and he catches the outside corner. Bourbon has shown us a lot of the curve, although he's primarily a sinking fastball pitcher, getting everybody to drive the ball into the ground. Campanaris is 0 for 21, takes the pitch up high. He's had three base hits in this World Series, but in his last 21 times at bat, he has not reached base. Bourbon's earned run average is 1.47, and the six and the third innings, he is worked. Back again, and a base hit up the middle for Campanaris. And now for the first time, since way back in the first game, the leadoff man, Campy Campanaris, who makes the offense of the A's go, is on at first base. He is the man that steals all those bases over there in the American League. He is the man that had to come off the bench in the last game of the season to steal the stolen base title away from Davey Nelson of Texas with a fine performance. Here's Manguel who scored the only Angel run, or rather, he is Angel Manguel, the only A's run, as Tolan misjudged his line drive in the first for a three-base error, and Tennis knocked him in with a base hit. And they have checked Campanaris at first base to keep him close. One to one the score. We are in the sixth. A breaking pitch. Bunted up the line. Perez will have to go to first base. Morgan covering the sacrifice bunt is complete. Campanaris moves into second base. Fine bunt. By Manguel, and here is Joe Rudy. The only RBI that Rudy has had was a game-winning RBI, a home run in the second game one week ago today. The go-ahead run down at second base. And now it is Finch that is talking with Bourbon. And now we have activity. Clay Carroll, the Hawk, is up and throwing in the Cincinnati bullpen. Menke has talked things over now with Bourbon. He goes back to third base. Bench is behind the plate. Campanaris is down at second base. And Rudy, a 3.05 hitter during the regular season, 6 for 24 in this World Series. Right-handed batter with a great deal of his hits going to the opposite field, steps in. Herb Norton, a third base coach, hands on knees, bending over. He gets a chance to wave that speedy Campanaris around third or hold him up. Did Rudy do something? And there's the ball hit to the other side. Morgan has come up with it. Go to first base. As to third goes Campanaris. Two out with Gene Tennis, the leading RBI man in the World Series coming up. He drove his eighth today. He has hit four home runs. Johnny Bench goes up again to talk to Bourbon. And now Sparky Anderson comes out to talk to Bourbon. One run, three hits, no errors for the A's. One run, two hits, and a very damaging error for the Reds, and that was the three-base error by Tolan in the first, which allowed the A's to get on the scoreboard for their first and only time thus far. The go-ahead run, Campy Campanaris is at third base. Two are out. Tennis. Four home runs. Seven for 22 in the series. Eight RBIs. The batter. Tennis playing at first base today to keep his bat in the lineup. Leans in from the right side and swings and fouls off a fastball. Picked up by on one hand by Sal Bando in the on deck circle, and he throws it back to Pelicutis the umpire. 
like Juan to tennis, who never moves from that batter's box. He keeps those feet planted and just stays in there until Bourbon gets the new ball. Nobody throwing in the A's bullpen now. There's an off-speed pitch line down the left field away from Rose. It's 2-1. to one. Around first base on his way to second is tennis. Here's Rose's draw, and he's in with a double and his ninth RBI of the ball game. It is 2-1 to one, Oakland. Gene Tennis has had some kind of World Series. That is his eighth hit, his second in this ball game, his second RBI in this ball game, his ninth run batted in. And he is in scoring position with Fando up. And now we're going to get Alan Lewis to race out towards second base. And he will run for tennis, which means that after all, we will see Epstein at first base later on. Epstein or Mike Keegan. Epstein not starting to do it. Keegan has been the late inning defensive replacement, and with a one-run ball game, money probably would go to Keegan. Yes, I would imagine he usually goes in late defense. It's hard to score in a hit here. It usually makes the change. Fastball inside the bando. It's ball one. Well, the A's tied the ball game in the last of the fifth. Now the A's, the A's have uh, red side in the last of the fifth. Now the A's have gone ahead, and that's the second pitch inside from Bourbon, and it's 2-0. Oh. Pedro has been most effective throughout this series, but has given up two hits and the go-ahead run. Back again, this pitch is very high. Now remember, he is a sinking fastball pitcher. That fastball was up at the cap of Bando, who looks down to Norn with a 3-0 and oh count. Menke races over. Clay Carroll continues to throw in the Reds' bullpen. And the crowd at Riverfront Stadium suddenly very quiet again. They had rallied. Now they're behind. And there's a ball hit the straightaway center field. Bobby Tolan goes back near the warning crack. Reaches up. It'll be off the wall. And it is now 3-1. to one. The ball gets away from Tolan. In the second base goes Bando with a double. Back-to-back -back doubles. And Tolan, who pulled an Achilles tendon twice, is limping and now bending over in center field. And the trainer for the Reds is dashing to center field. Trying to walk it off. Looks like he's holding the back of his left leg, Monty. Jim, he fell about two steps from the warning track. I don't know if he could have caught that ball if he'd have kept going. I don't think he could have. It was really carrying to the wall. But he grabbed that uh, back of his leg, and when a sprinter grabs the back of a leg, you think hamstring right away. But he folded up in a heap. He looked... Remember the time in New York when Mickey Mantle took off to first base and just collapsed and grabbed the back of his leg. It looked that kind of a play. He did scramble on his knees and pick the ball up, but he really went down, and if he is hurt badly enough that he couldn't run, it would really take a weapon away from the wrist. Barky Anderson has gone all the way to center field to see Bobby Tolan. Tolan is due up next, or I should say in the next inning, second following Morgan. And you know the kind of combination that Morgan and Tolan make on those bases. Tolan is up and walking around. And suddenly, against Bourbon, who has been one of the most effective pitchers of this World Series, the A's, who haven't scored too many runs, have scored two here with two out and back-to-back -back doubles by Tennis and Bando. Right-handers facing the right-hander, Bourbon, who has not been able to keep that ball low, Monty. I think uh, it was a 3-0 and o count then, wasn't it, Jim? Uh, Bando, with a right-handed pitcher going, he being a right-handed batter, was given the green light, and, man, did he get into it. Dolan is coming off the field. He's limping off the field, and he might be through. Corbone continues to warm, and we will await with you, Monty, to see who goes out there to replace Tolan in center field. Seventh game of the World Series. What a dramatic inning this sixth is. They have broken the one-to-one -one tie, and the Reds have lost Bobby Tolan who has driven in so many runs, six in the first three games, and stolen five bases. What a loss this is. That's the first run battered into the series for Sal Bando, and I don't suppose he could have picked a better time. This series has been incredible for the closeness of the games. The first five games were all decided by one run, and listen to the scores. Oakland won here in Cincinnati, 3-2 to two in the first game. They won in the second game, 2-1. to one. Then we went out to Oakland, and Cincinnati won one to nothing behind Billingham. 
Then Oakland won three to two. Then in the fifth game of the series, Cincinnati won five to four. Only yesterday did either club really break loose and score a lot of runs. And they've always said that good pitching can stop good hitting. Well, these two clubs were the second top scoring clubs in their leagues. Cincinnati averaged five runs a game, almost six this year in the National League, and the A's averaged just short of five in the American League. So they can score, but here in this series, they haven't. They may be giving Tolan some time to see whether or not he's going back in. The plate umpire, Chris, Chris Pelicutis, has told Jerry Adair, the first base coach, to go tell Dick Williams what is going on in the dugout, and Tolan is standing there, and perhaps it is, and now he's beginning to jump up and down a little, that perhaps it is they want to make absolutely sure that Bobby is really out of this ball game before putting a replacement in. In the meantime, Monty, Ross Grimsley, the big left-hander who has won two in a row, the last two in a row, has come on and has joined Kell in the bullpen. And a factor here, Dick Williams is complaining a little bit. I'm sure this might be about uh, this situation. They're using uh, the delay of, t- of Tolan getting ready or not getting ready over there to jump a left-hander and get him ready to pitch to Matty Alou, who was due to bat uh, next. So... Uh, this could be uh, a factor here. Tolan is not out of the ball game yet. He is in the dugout, and the trainer is working on him there. They might try to tape that up and keep him in there. But as you mentioned, Grimsley is getting ready in a hurry with the left-handed batting Matty Alou due to go next. This crowd here today, 56,040, the largest baseball crowd ever in Cincinnati. Last Sunday's record was 53,224. And that was a record on that day. The riverfront seating capacity is 51,744. So the ushers came to the ballpark today with shoehorns, and they put 5,000 more in here than you're supposed to. We have seven straight sellouts, and it has just been fantastic to watch the excitement of the people in these two cities. I think that's a sideline we must talk about. Over in... uh, Oakland, when the A's came back after winning the playoffs, they had not been back to Oakland since winning the playoffs. Then they won the first two games of the series here. Some 10,000 fans met the A's ball club at the Oakland airport when they got in there last Sunday night. When the Reds came back here after winning the fifth game in Oakland, they were greeted by estimates as high as 15,000 fans at the airport here in Cincinnati. Everywhere you go in both cities, there are banners proclaiming the good parts of that both ball clubs. And it's just been tremendous to see the enthusiasm of the baseball fans of America and to see these seven straight sellouts. And they're going to bring in the right-hander, Blake Carroll, out of the bullpen. Apparently, they're putting bandaging around the leg of Bobby Tolan. If they were going to put another outfielder in there, I'm sure he would have been there by now. Clay Carroll, who set a major league record this year with 37 saves for Cincinnati, is going to the mound now. Carroll, so far in the World Series, has been in four games. This is his fifth appearance. He has had short relief work, however. His record is no wins. He lost the one game out in Oakland. In four and two-thirds innings, he's given up six hits and one earned run. He's walked a couple and struck out two. He's a challenging type pitcher. And I think his greatest job, there goes Solon back out in the center field. He's running rather gingerly. As a matter of fact, he's not running. He's just trotting there. Well, they say there's a difference in the great athlete in being able to play with pain and injury. Great athletes will play with pain. Of course, they can't play with an injury. So Bobby Solon now is standing out in short right center field and asking, do you want me to go to right field where I would have to do less running or stay in center? That might be a good question. Right now, they had Geronimo out in center. They're going to tell uh, Tolan to go on. And right now, I would imagine one reason for that. With a left-handed batter up, if Alou throws the ball into right field, they'll want a man with Geronimo's great arm strength to come on and try to throw out the runner at the plate. Matty Alou has been thrown out twice today. Once tried to burn his way on. He is 0 for 17. 
Down at second base is Bando. They're going to walk him, Jim, uh, and that's the reason the left-hander didn't come in. They've got Dave Duncan due to bat next. Tension a walk to uh, Matty Lou will put him on, and then at first and second, this inning started all tied at 1-1. Campanaris slid off with a single. He had gone 0 for 21 before he got that single. Manguel sacrificed him along to second base, but Rudy quickly grounded to the right side. Campanaris took third, but there were two out. Then tennis, laced a double. The left field to drive it his ninth run of the ball game and put him out in front by the score of 2-1. to one. Alan Lewis went in the run for him, and Bando laced a double off the center field wall, and it was on that play that Tolan got hurt. Warbone, who gave up all of the hits and runs, is out of there now. Alou has been given first base on the intentional pass. Here is Duncan. Carroll throws a breaking pitch to him. It's outside ball one. Duncan is one for three in the series, plus a walk. And he was picked off second base as Odom was trying to bunt back in the second inning and missed. Big strong man that hit 19 home runs during the regular season. Another breaking pitch to the left side. In the hole goes Concepcion. He can't make a play. It's off him. Drops in front of him. The bases are loaded. It hopped up to Concepcion in the hole and then bounced away for an error. Dick Williams is going to make another change now. Dick Green is scheduled to bat here, but it looks as if... Well, he's calling Dick Green back to talk with him. He's probably going to say, Dick, you've been hitting the ball. Do you think you can hit this guy, or do you want us to pinch hit? So it uh, it might be left right on the shoulders of Dick Green to make a decision here. Well, he's going to swing the bat. Two runs are in. It's a three-to-one ball game, Oakland. We're in the top of the sixth. Carroll has the bases loaded. Bandos over at third. Alou is down at second. And Duncan on what would have been the inning-ending error is on at first base. Green is now talking to Pelacutis and steps in. Runners lead away. Carroll throws. It's in on the fifth, but he swings and fouls it to the street. Strike one. Green has had a couple of doubles in this series, and he is one for two today. And Menke almost made a misplay on him in the fifth inning. Singled in the second, rounded to Menke in the fifth. Carroll with those 37 saves, and a tough spot blows this one right by him. Strike two. Green may have nicked it with his bat, swinging, but Carroll was throwing his good fastball. Carroll, like most good relievers, has the fastball slider and shows you the occasional curve. Base is loaded with two out. Carroll back and throws, and there's a swinging foul. It bounds over toward the photographers to the right of the Oakland dugout. Still two strikes. Riverfront Stadium, very quiet now. Their Reds are down by two to the A's. In the deciding game of the World Series. Carroll is ready and throws a curve, and there goes the bat as Green strikes out with the bases loaded. Two-run score on three base hits. There was one error, and the bases were left loaded. We go to the last of the six. Oakland three, Cincinnati one. This is Danny Thomas, and I'd like to invite you to take your morning coffee break with me. I'll be here Monday through Friday to talk with you about things that are on my mind, and perhaps on yours, too. What I plan to do is just to spend a few minutes with you in the morning and try to make you relax, maybe even laugh. Oh, sure, we'll get a little serious once in a while, but don't worry. It'll be an easy doses. And we'll share some anecdotes, stories about friends of mine and yours, and some straightforward conversation. Now, NBC emphasis, drop in, won't you? I think you'll like it. The Oakland A's scored their two go-ahead runs in the sixth inning. Campanaris led it off with a single. Manuel sacrificed him down after Rudy was out. Gene Tennis got a double to left field and then Bando got a double to center and the A's leave the bases loaded as Carroll came in to strike out Dick Green we go to the last of the sixth here's Jim Simpson Morgan is hit into a double play walked and been thrown out at second Hunter throws it's a breaking pitch inside ball one now Hunter came on in the fifth inning and walked Concepcion and then McRae sacrificed fly took Manguel deep to center field and he had to go back deep again and this one has popped up Campanaris going out saying he's got it. It'll have to be a great over-the-shoulder catch, and he makes the catch. 
The point that I was making was that in the fifth inning, Hunter got the ball up, and the Reds really got their bats around. Here's Bobby Tolan, who has walked. He's 0 for 1 and has that full muscle that was bandaged. And Mike Keegan, as expected, when Lewis ran for tennis, has taken over at first base. Well, Tennis has seen the last of his World Series action, but how about that nine RBIs and four home runs? Tolan watches a fastball for a strike. You're superstitious. In the last four seven-game series, the visiting team won the deciding game. On her back and throws, and it's fouled off to the left by Tolan. That was Pittsburgh at Baltimore last year in the Steve Blass game. Detroit at St. Louis in 68, St. Louis at Boston in 67, and Los Angeles at Minnesota in 65. Two strikes now to Tolan with one out of the sixth. A's three, Reds one. Catfish Hunter, the second pitcher in relief of Odom. His game to win or lose here, pitches inside, backing Tolan out. One ball, two strikes. Hunter ready to throw and comes back with a breaking pitch. It's fouled off to the left, and it's still one and two to Tolan. Bobby had a great three games driving in in the fourth, fifth, and sixth games, two runs in each of those. He stole five bases over the first six games. In this game, he committed a run scoring, uh, set up a run, the score on his error, three base error, in the first inning, and has pulled a hamstring muscle. That is our judgment from here, the way he was holding it. Off-speed pitch has Tolan out in front, strikeout. Hunter gets his first strikeout. That'll bring up Johnny Bench. Hit a curveball from Odom right at Campanaris back in the second inning and fouled out to Fando near the A's dugout in the fourth. He is 0 for 2. And Bench comes up with nobody on base. Campanaris again goes deep in the hole as he was the first two times Bench came up, and that saved a base hit back in the second. Hunter throws, ground ball toward the shortstop. Campanaris charging it, second out, throws to first, pulls Egan off the bag, and he's safe. Egan says, I tagged him, and there's Jim Honachick again, right back in the middle of the argument. That is an error on Campanaris. The easiest play he's had in the series, Jim. It looked as if he just took so much time. He knew he had so much time, he made a bad throw. And here's Perez, who last time up doubled and made a score the only run. And Perez has had great success with Hunter over the years. He was one for two against him. In the fifth game... Fingers and Holtzman continue to throw. And he's the man that started the ninth inning rally in the second game, but the A's held on to win that one. And he is the man, Perez is, that hit the game-winning home run in the All-Star game in Anaheim in 1966. Dick Williams in the A's dugout is a raving maniac right now. He ran down to look at the replay on the instant television replay set they have at the corner of the dugout, and he came up furious. Two are out, but the gates are open with Bench at first on the air. Curveball stays very high from Hunter. Ball one. A's lead it by two. We are in the last of the six. Guarding the line is Bando at third base. Very deep. Another curveball. Foul to the screen. Well, the end of five, it was... 1-1, but if it goes to the end of 6-3-1, it is an official ball game, and no matter how much rain we have, and rain is expected, we'll wait around until they complete it or call it off, and that team in front would be the winner. One ball, one strike. Perez, long ball hitter, and swings at a chain, and it's one ball, two strikes. Hunter took something off of that. Catfish is known as one of the game's better competitors. He must, however, have his pinpoint control. If he is not on the corners, 
he is in trouble. One ball, two strikes. From the stretch with Bench not going far, just misses outside. Dropped down a little bit for that fastball. Hunter believes in what Warren Spahn used to say. The plate is 17 inches wide. The hitter gets the middle 15 inches. I'll take the one on the outside and the inside. Two balls, two strikes. Back with a 2-2, he breaks down. Uh, it's away from Duncan, who lost it, picks it up. He's just stayed right there, and Bench is going nowhere. But now we'll see Bench off in motoring with two out and a 3-2 count on Perez, who sent Rudy to the wall in the second inning and double to left in the fifth. Both those swings were against John Blue Moon Odom. Now he's facing Catfish Hunter. On deck is Dennis Minkie. Hunter checks Bench back to first base, realizing he'll be going with two out. A's lead it by two. The tying run is at bat. A's infield very deep, and there's a pitch curveball way outside. He walked him. That'll bring up Menke. Well, you can bet that that was not an intentional walk, but neither was it so unintentional. Hunter was not about to give Perez, a home run hitter, anything good to swing at. And this made it too bad. Dick Williams is coming out, and with the right hand of Minky coming up, maybe this is the time we'll see Raleigh Fingers. But as Williams walks to the mound, let's just pause 30 seconds for station identification. Next weekend is Halloween Hullabaloo at Candlewick Lake. So this is Jim Simpson back in Cincinnati. Two are on, two are out. Minky the batter, three to one. Oakland, Minky is the go-ahead run, and he takes a pitch on the outside corner. Catfish got the corner on that pitch. The A's have scored three times. One of theirs was unearned. Any runs that might score in this inning would be unearned because of the throwing error by Campanaris on an easy play. Pitch bounces away from Duncan, gets back to the wall. In to cover home is Catfish as the runners move up. Wild pitch. and Holtzman are throwing. Hunter with a new baseball walks back behind the mound. Put Johnny Bench over at third base as a runner and Perez down at second with first base open and two out. Ball one, strike one to Menke. Hunter is ready. Pitching from the windup and just misses on the outside corner. That's two and one. The left-handed batter, Geronimo, is on deck. The two-one pitch from Hunter. Back, fastball. He misses outside again. It's three and one. A's lead it by two. The tying runs are in scoring position. And Menke going to get some kind of pitch here. He'll be looking this one over. Three and one with two out. Hunter's got to be around the plate here. Walk of bases loaded. It has popped up to the right side. In comes Alou. Waves everybody away. Had a little late break on the ball, but is there in plenty of time, and they're out of the inning. No runs. No hits. A shaky error by Campanaris, and two men left. We've gone six innings. It's now a complete ball game. A's three, Reds one. Coming on now, the top half of the seventh inning, and Bobby Tolan is no longer in the game for Cincinnati. He gave it a game try, but his leg just gave out on him, and they have now moved... Geronimo into center field and George Foster is in in right field. Catfish Hunter will be the batter as we go to play Carroll pitching once again, Jim Simpson. Catfish Hunter is a fine hitting pitcher. I think you know that by now and to have him lead off an inning is not like having most pitchers lead off an inning. 
The opposition usually almost concedes that as an automatic out. Hunter may go out, but he can hit the baseball. Clay Carroll throws to him. It's high, ball one. Hunter waits in this 3-1 to ball game. We're now in the seventh inning, and there's a pitch down low beneath the outstretched glove of Bench and goes back to the screen. It's ball two. Carroll was high with the first pitch and in the dirt with the second. Foster out in right field is in his second World Series game. He does not have an official at-bat. Carroll is ready, and this one is high and out of the strike zone to the pitcher, Hunter. It is 3-0. Carroll right back, and his breaking pitch misses, and on four pitches, Carroll didn't like the call by Pelicutis on the last one. On four pitches, Hunter walks. Hunter back in the ball game that he won on Sunday. Drove in the first run. Has his jacket on now. And has gone to first base. Ross Grimsley continues to warm the big left-hander who has won the last two games in a row for the Reds in their comeback attempt. Well, they have come back. It's three games to three. Here's Campanera, singled last time up and scored the go-ahead run. Bunts toward Carroll. Carroll comes up with it, goes to first base as Hunter goes down to second base and the sacrifice works as Hunter is down at second base. And that'll bring up Manguel, who has scored a run in this ball game, reaching when Tolan misplayed his line drive in the first into a three-base error and scoring on tennis a single. Since that time, he has popped to Morgan at second and sacrificed Campaneros down to second base. Has a chance now to drive in his second run of the World Series. You'll recall that he had the game-winning hit out on the West Coast in the last of the ninth of the game out there. Hayes lead it 3-1, to one, one out here in the seventh inning. Manguel, a right-handed batter, facing the right-handed Clay Carroll. They play Manguel, they hit to the opposite field. They play him around to the right. Big curveball blocked in the dirt by Bench. Well, you just can't say it too much. Regardless of the outcome of this World Series, Johnny Bench has proven himself to be the kind of superstar and super catcher everybody has said he is. He has really had his work cut out for him. Fastball, and this is foul tipped at the plate. One ball, one strike. Catfish Hunter is down at second base. Nobody's working in the A's bullpen. Hunter, a real competitor, had a little control problems there. But has worked his way out of all the jams, getting Menke with a fine 3-1 pitch to pop up to short right. Curve ball, and again, Bench has to go outside and backhand that, lest it get away. Two balls, one strike. Blake Carroll did a marvelous job in the last of the sixth. Walked one man intentionally. In trouble because of an error, but then struck out. Green swinging to end the inning. Back with another curveball on 2-1, and it's fouled at the plate. 2-2. Two and two. Fifty-six thousand and forty, a record crowd for baseball in the great city of Cincinnati looking in today. And at the moment, most of those 56,000 are not pleased with what they're seeing because most of them obviously are Reds fans. Manguel is ready. Carroll has the side. 2-2. Hunter at second base. Looks. Back throws another curve. Bounding very slowly to Menke at third base. And he's got plenty of time to make the throw over to Perez. Or two out. Hunter has to hold second. Carroll. I don't know whether or not it's the inability to get his fast stuff over as he walked to pitcher Hunter. Has gone mostly to the breaking ball here. Here's Rudy, 0 for 3 today. Rudy came up with a man in scoring position, hit the first pitch he saw in the sixth inning, and grounded quickly to second base. Sparky Anderson is walking out, and he may go to the bullpen despite the fact Rudy is a right-handed hitter. He can see that uh, Clay Carroll is throwing nothing but those big curves, Money. They might uh, decide to pitch around Rudy here and then bring in the left-hander to go to Mike Keegan, uh, Sparky figuring that Egan would would be the batter. He has been in there all year in late inning defensive replacements, and though the A's have Mike Epstein, 
They're going to bring the left-hander in right here, and I would imagine that they will bring him in and walk Rudy and then pitch to Mike Egan, who is a 300 hitter, by the way, for the A's this year. It's been interesting to watch the pitchers for Cincinnati here today, Jim, and you mentioned the curveballs that Carroll's been throwing. You know, just about every one of their pitchers today have gone mostly breaking balls. Rudy, the first time up, saw five or six straight. Uh, the last time, Bourbon threw to Rudy. He threw him two curveballs, got him on the second one. And Carroll has thrown the breaking ball, so maybe the Reds, after six games of the series, decided that the A's are not a breaking ball hitting team. Dick Williams, in case you might be interested in what he has in the way of right-handed pinch hitters in the dugout, should he want to make a change for Hegan if they do walk Rudy here, the A's have Tim Cullen, George Hendricks, and Dow Maxville as right-handed pinch hitters, plus they have two switch hitters, Ted Kubiak and uh, Alan Lewis. So it'll be interesting to see what the strategy is here. Many times the manager will bring the pitcher in who's going to really be pitching to a guy two men away just to let him get accustomed to the mound here while he throws ball four. Grimsley, as Jim mentioned, has won two of the three games the Reds have won. He lost one also. So he has three decisions already in this World Series by pitching only six and two-thirds innings. An unusual statistic. He has allowed seven hits and only two runs. He has struck out one. He threw one home run ball, and he threw that to Joe Rudy. Grimsley continues to warm up. Rudy is standing by. Pelicutis, the home plate umpire, has had another conversation with Dick Williams, the A's manager, who now heads back to the dugout. This has been a strategy conversational World Series. Well, when you get five of the first six decided by one run, only the sixth game yesterday, and that was close until the seventh inning when ten men went to bat. Won by Cincinnati to tie the series. They won it 8-1. to one. Situation is two out. Down at second base is the opposing pitcher, Catfish Hunter. A's lead this in the seventh, 3-1. to one. Deciding game, and here they're going to do, as Monty suggested, put Rudy on with the intentional walk. That's ball two. Bench jumping outside to take it. There's ball three. Well, in the seventh, Carroll gave up the walk to the opposing pitcher. There's ball four to Rudy. And that'll bring up Mike Egan. Hunter Walk sacrificed along by Campanaris. Mangrel was thrown out easily, and then the strategy started, and Grimsley came on to pitch to Joe Rudy. Carroll has worked... Uh, one inning has given up two walks, one intentional, struck out one, and he is through for the day. Egan coming on now, 250 in the series, one for four. If you recall again that he was better than the 300 hitter, a fine defensive player for the A's all year long in the late inning. All in McLaughlin and now in the bullpen for Cincinnati, left hand and right hander. Egan takes the first pitch, it's a strike at the letters. Strike one. Honor at second, Rudy at first, two out of the seventh. Egan, big, strong, left-handed hitter. Looks, and this pitch is wild. Does Bench go outside to get that one? Outside and low. Grimsley now becomes the fourth Reds pitcher in this seventh World Series game. And there are two more warming. Grimsley ready, looks back at second and throws. The slider to catch the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. Good pitch from Grimsley. That ball ducked away from Hegan. And caught the corner. So now Hegan is behind to Grimsley. Herb Norton yelled something out to Catfish Hunter at second base. Here's the one-two pitch. This is way outside and squares the count at two off. In the red seventh, it'll be the seven, eight, nine batters. But as in the playoffs, the A's lost Reggie Jackson, their center fielder. In this seventh game, the Reds have lost Bobby Colton. 
Lost with both leg muscles. Grimsley back and it's foul to the screen. 2-2. Two -two. Well, no matter who wins this game, this seventh game, you've got to say that you really can't pick between them on the basis of their play. Every game except one has been very close. There's been good pitching, good defense, little hitting until yesterday. 2-2. Two -two. Left-hander Grimsley throws, takes something off of it, and gets him swinging. Bob Grimsley does the job. No runs, no hits, no errors. Two medal left. We go to the last of the seventh. Oakland leads Cincinnati 3-1. The series, this is Monty Moore with Jim Simpson. Now, this game has been fraught with danger for pitchers on both sides the last couple of innings. The A's in the sixth inning left the bases loaded. They left two on in the seventh. Cincinnati left two on in the fifth and two on in the sixth. So either club has had a chance to break it open in the last two innings. And we are now in for a wild, wild finish of this. Well, with the pitcher due up in the seventh, the number three batter, the Reds, have Tom Hall throwing. And before Hunter even throws his first pitch off the seventh, Raleigh fingers the right-hander, Kenny Holtz from the left-hander, are throwing in the A's bullpen. Geronimo, who is three for 17 in the series. He's one for two. Well, he's one for one in this game. He walked in the fifth inning. Left-handed batter now playing center field. Swings at the first pitch. A breaking pitch from Hunter. It's strike one. Geronimo switched to center when Tolan came up injured. Hunter, the right-hander back and throws a fastball. It's fouled off to the left. And Jim Catfish Hunter's out in front of Geronimo. 0 and 2. Well, you're getting down to the last innings of the last game of the 1972 season. At the moment, the A's lead it 2 to nothing. Hunter throws a breaking pitch and strikes him out on three pitches. And that's the best example we have seen Hunter around the plate in this appearance. All three pitches were well within the strike zone. Started him off with a breaking pitch that Geronimo missed then came back with a fastball that he fouled to the screen and then struck him out way out in front of a slow curve. Concepcion is up and Joe Haig has come out on deck. The bat for the pitcher, Ross Grimsley. They need runs now, not pitching. Fastball right down the middle. Concepcion watched it for strike one. Three runs, five hits, one error for the A's. One run, two hits, two errors for the Reds. One of them costly. Back with a breaking pitch that drops over for another strike. And again, that's five pitches that Hunter has thrown, and they've all been in the strike zone. He was missing badly back in the sixth inning and even committed a wild pitch. Concepcion. Waits on the two-strike pitch, another curve, but this stays inside and high. It's one ball, two strikes. Red fans realize that they got to get something started. This is the seventh inning of the seventh game. Back with another curve, strikes him out swinging. The Jim Hunter curveball has struck out. The last too many has faced swinging. Now Joe Haig has gone back to the dugout with nobody on base and Ted Ulander has a bat on his hand for the second time today. One for three on the series. He had a bases empty double. So it is Ulander who will hit. Dave Duncan goes out. Of course, Catfish Hunter, Duncan Bando have seen Ulander for many, many years. He was with Minnesota, later with Cleveland. Fingers. Holtzman continue to throw. That double that uh, Ulander had with nobody on was against Hunter. At this moment... Sparky Anderson, the Reds and their fans would like Lightning to strike twice in the same place. Ulander, big, strong left-handed hitter, used to be a pretty good power hitter. Takes a good rip at a high fastball there and fouls it to the screen. 
That pitch was up, and Ulander took a good swing. One strike. Hunter has been throwing strikes, comes back and gives him the fastball that gets the outside corner looking. It's 0-2 to Ulander. And Hunter has been ahead of every batter he has faced in this inning. Ready with the 0-2 pitch, and this hits in the dirt in front of Ulander and bounds to Duncan, the catcher. One ball, two strikes. On a right back, and this one bounces by Ulander's feet, a breaking pitch, and gets away from Duncan. It's 2-2. Tom Hall will be the next pitcher for Cincinnati, and he is completing his warm-ups right now. And Hall will become the fifth Cincinnati pitcher in this game. 2-2 to Ulander, throws him the breaking pitch, lined out to left field, but Rudy has plenty of room and time, and is there, and that's a 1-2-3 inning for Hunter. The runs hits to Arizona and none left. We've gone seven full now, and Cincinnati trails Oakland 3-1. We go to the top half of the eighth inning. It's a, another new pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds. Left-hander the blade, Tommy Hall, 150-pound strikeout artist who has had a very fine World Series for Cincinnati. He had a great year. He won 10 games, lost only one this year for the Reds. And so far in the series, in three games, he's not been scored on. In six and a third innings, he's given up five hits. The line score right now, Oakland three runs, five hits. They've made one error. The Cincinnati Reds, one run. They've had only two hits in the game, and they have made a couple of miscues. Chris Pelicutis is going to the mound, and he is saying something to Tommy Hall about going to his mouth with his fingers and whether or not they're telling him it is okay here to do it on the dirt part or that today is so warm that you can't do it, we don't know. But he talked with him about that. Here we go to the eighth, and once again, Jim. Sal Bando won for three today. The last time up, he drove in the third run of the ball game with a double to center field. It was on that double that Tolan was injured. Right-handed batter, and Hall throws a strike on the inside corner. Bando for Sal. That was his first RBI of the World Series. Hall, tall and thin, as Monty said, they call him the blade. Back took something off of that, and Bando swings and misses. Strike two. Bando didn't think he went around, and he and Pelicutis are having a little discussion now. Either Pelicutis is saying it was over anyway, or you did go around. Two strikes to Bando, the leadoff batter, and the Oakland eighth of a three-to-one ball game. All right back, and there's a foul tip to the screen. Should the A's win today? Should they win today? They have not won since they belonged to Philadelphia in 1930. That's 42 years ago. Cincinnati has won two World Series in 1919 and in 1940. They'd like to make it three today. Now they trail by two runs in the eighth. Already two strike. Pitch to Bando, who pops it up foul and off to the right and in the seats. Perhaps 20 rows back. 1,960,132 have watched baseball in this stadium this year including the playoffs in the World Series. Two strikes to Bando. All is in the windup, and here's the pitch. It's in the dirt, and it's ball one. On ball, two strikes. Nobody in either bullpen at the moment. The two runs in the sixth came on a Campanera single. He was sacrificed a second by Manguel. Rudy grounded out. He went to third, and then... Tennis and Bando put together back-to-back -back doubles to make it three to one. One and two, and Hall is ready and throws an overhand pitch that stays high, and it's two and two. Hall came straight over the top on that one, but it stayed up high. Two balls, two strikes. Ready again, and this pitch is low and inside, and it's three and two to the leadoff batter Bando. And Sal steps out. Right. 
Hanky at third, Concepcion at short, Morgan at second, Perez at first. Back and swinging strike three. Something off the breaking pitch and struck him out. Second strikeout. Check that first strikeout, of course, for Hall. And here's Alou. Walked intensely last time, and Matty has not had the good series. He has had one base hit. He is 0 for his last 17 times at bat. And this is a man that hit over 300 with the Cardinals. Ground ball right back to Hall. Lobs it over to first base and a two out. So Lou now is 0 for 18 and may have been up for the last time. 12 years, that's one of those things as great a series as Gene Tennis is having. Here's a fellow like Matty Alou in 12 years in the major leagues has averaged 310 for a lifetime career and he's only had one hit in the World Series. Here's Duncan with two out. Throws him the fastball and it's strike one. Duncan walked in the second, was picked off and then struck out at a big Jack Billingham curveball in the fifth. Billingham did a superb job. He allowed one run, but that was unearned. Struck out four and walked two, but he had to go, and the Reds needed some runs. Ball is lifted high and foul down the left field line and will make the seats very deep. Had it stayed fair, it would have been caught. Two strikes now to Duncan. When we go to the A's, or rather to the Reds' eighth inning, it'll be the top three men, Rose Morgan, and an important absence. Tolan is gone injured. Two strikes. Pitch, she strikes him out swinging. Great inning for the Blade. Tom Hall, no runs, hits the and he struck out two of the men. We go to the last of the eighth, and Oakland leads Cincinnati in the seventh game of the World Series, three to one. Last half of the eighth inning, and the tension is mounting. You could cut it with a knife. It's just hanging in the air here as Pete Rose comes to the plate. He greeted Hunter with a home run in the first pitch he threw to him in the last game that Hunter started in this series. He almost hit one out in the fifth inning off Hunter after he came in in relief. Rose is one for three today. And strangely enough, the one hit was the ball that he didn't get all off. The other two, he sent... Manguel deep, tries to butt his way on its foul. In the fourth and fifth innings, each time Manguel had to go to the wall to take long drives off the bat of Rose. His one hit came in the first on a very close play, a bounce to the green at second base. A's lead it three to one. We're getting ever closer to a locker room celebration for one of these two teams. And the end of the 1972 season. Bando is in on the turf ahead of the bag. Rose wants to get on. The pitch is outside from Hunter. It's one ball, one strike. And of course, Fingers and Holtzman are still in that bullpen for the A's. As Hunter went to the mound, they went to the bullpen. Rose, the switch hitter, crouching very low from the left side. Back, and as a breaking pitch, grounded up the middle, and they get through. Campanaris waves at it, and throws the base hit. Rose on the way around first. And then stop there as Manuel is up with the ball. Morgan, who is now the tying run, the bat. That's the first hit of Hunter and only the third for the Reds. Duncan, Bando, walks to the mound to talk to Catfish Hunter and Dick Williams comes out of the dugout. They've got a left-hander, Morgan, and he might go with the left-hander, Holtzman. Williams crosses the third baseline, walking very resolutely now. For Duncan, first of all, to talk to him. And then up on the mound, the catfish hunter, Joe Morgan, who broke things apart, got his first two hits yesterday, has walked five times, and has scored four runs. Today, he is 0 for 2. Williams is going to call for the left-hander. He wants Kenny Holtzman to come in. With none out in the eighth of a 3-1 to ball game. And Holtzman, former National Leaguer, who a year ago pitched a no-hitter against these Reds, is walking in. 
Well, Dick Williams is playing percentages in one side and playing against him on another side. The word is that Morgan hit over 350 against left-hand pitching this year in the National League. He had two hits yesterday here off left-handers. One, a double off Vida Blue to start the ball game uh, for Cincinnati, and another off Hamilton that knocked in a run or two. Uh, Kenny Holtzman has been in the National League for a great number of years before the A's traded for him this year from the Chicago Cubs. Holtzman pitched one of the games here in the World Series. Uh, as a matter of fact, he's pitched so far in this World Series in two games and has won one of them in 12 and two-thirds innings of work. We pause here 30 seconds for station identification. Next weekend, it's Halloween Hullabaloo at Candlewick Lake. There'll be fun for the whole family. Bump for apples and join in the big pumpkin carving contest with free pumpkins for all the kids. And a big costume contest. Cider and donuts, too. It's all free. So come to Candlewick Lake next weekend for the big Halloween Hullabaloo. Just take I-90 to the General Road exit toward Belvedere and follow the signs to Candlewick Lake. That's Halloween Hullabaloo. WMAQ, Chicago. As Kenny Holtzman comes into the ball game, we're in the last half of inning number eight. The Oakland A's have a three-to-one lead, but the power-packed part of the Cincinnati batting order is due. Morgan, a left-handed batter, is coming on with Rose at first base, nobody down. Then George Foster is due to bat in the spot that would have been occupied by Bobby Tolan. Foster, however, a right-handed batter, has pretty good power. Now the A's have right-hander Raleigh Fingers and left-hander Vida Blue, who started yesterday's game, both out in the bullpen. And the Reds fans have come alive. Rose at first. Morgan, who can hit the ball out of here, represents the tying run in this 3-1 ball game in the Cincinnati 8th. Time is running out on the Reds, and if they are to win this game, it would be again in late-inning heroics, as they've done so many times throughout the season. Rose leads off at first base. The pitch, ball one. Duncan looks down the first base. Rose hasn't moved too far. The one thing that Holtzman does not want to do is put Morgan on. Then the winning run could come to the plate. And back with a pitch. Last bang. Keegan goes on his way to second. In the corner it goes. Rose goes to third. Morgan goes to second. Rose gets away from the loo. Rose is going to come on and now stops. The ball goes to third and he dives back to third. A double. The tying runs are at second and third with none out. Everybody pointed out, the Reds even pointed it out yesterday when the left-hander came in to pitch against Morgan and he crossed them up with a base hit, so he does today. That was just under the glove of the diving Mike Egan, but it was a scorcher. And Javier is coming out, Foster will not be allowed to bat. Javier, one of the grand old men of this game of baseball, and we beg your pardon, Julio, but you've been around a long while. And, of course, did such a great job with the Cardinals back in their 64, 67, and 68 World Series. Is 0 for 2 in the World Series, and he will now bat for Foster. And Dick Williams is coming out, and he's going to go to the right-handed. And that's got to be Raleigh Biggers is one of the toughest men in either league on right-handed batters. Well, the work is really cut out for the bullpen now if they come in. And Dick is looking down that way. That ball was very close to the type of ball that could have been turned into a double play. And a difference right here is the fact that Mike Hegan was holding against Pete Rose at first base with a left-handed batter up and a two-run lead. Now, many times they'll back that first baseman up in that kind of a situation and not hold him on. But with the Reds being a running ball club, they wanted to hold Rose on there. And Morgan's ball was just out of the reach of Hegan. And had Hegan been playing behind the bag, that could very well have been turned into a double play. Now the Reds have three shots at least at knocking in the tying runs. And they're going to bring Haig out to bat instead of Javier. So Dick Williams makes a change. And Sparky Anderson really 
I imagine Jockey to try to get Haig to hit here because looking at Julian Javier's regular season record, I'm sure he won't show to be offensively as good as Joe Haig's. Javier hit 209 for the year and Haig 243. Haig had seven home runs for the year and Javier had two. So Sparky Anderson in forcing the change with Javier has brought on Raleigh Fingers and now is able to use Joe Haig. So Fingers, who pulled off a couple of miracle saves in the playoffs for the Oakland A's against the Detroit Tigers, has got the biggest save to make that he has ever made in his baseball career. He's a big guy, 6'4". He is from Cucamonga, California. Now makes his home up in the San Francisco Bay Area. And during the year, Raleigh Fingers led the Oakland pitching staff in saves with 21. He won 11 games. He lost nine. But he comes into a situation here with nobody down. The tying runs in scoring position. And a tough left-handed hitter up. When Pedro Bourbon came on in the sixth inning, he tied Hugh Casey for the most appearances in a World Series six, and now Raleigh Fingers ties the both. This is his sixth appearance. Haig, left-handed batter. As Rose, who led off with a single over at third base following Morgan's double. They represent the tying run. Haig, who can knock it out of here, represents a potential winning run. And Fingers has the big job. Field is back on the right side. Haig hits the first one to left field. Campanaris goes back. He's got it. Now Rose Bluff's coming home, and Campanaris throws to the cutoff man, Bando. There's one out on one pitch. And that brings up Johnny Bench. Also brings up Dick Williams. Now, what do you do here? The Major League's top RBI man at the plate. First base is open, but if you're walking, you put the potential winning run on base, Jim. And this is why they pay managers a lot of money to make decisions. Well, some of my friends and relatives, Marty, say hindsight is 20-20 vision. If he puts him on the pitch to Perez, setting up the possible double play or play at any base, and gets away with it, that's one thing. If he pitches to Bench and Bench puts one out of here, that's another. Hindsight is 20-20. Yes, it certainly is, and of course the fact that you don't want to walk the winning run on base with Perez, a 90-a-year RBI man coming up behind him, so the pressure is really on right here. Johnny Ben. They say in the National League, the MVP vote, is they're going to put him on. They're going to put the winning run on. Now remember... Hindsight is 2020 vision. Let us see if the A's in this very important managerial decision, the biggest of the series, get away with it. Here it is in the eighth inning of the deciding game. There are no more games to play. Cincinnati is the home team. They have decided to put the winning run on first base. Don Gullett is a left-hander now throwing down in the bullpen, along with Jim McGoughlin. There is ball four to bench. The bases are loaded. We've got one out. And the right-hander, Fingers, coming up. To face the right-handed batter, Perez. Fingers has been especially tough on right-handed hitters. And he'll have to be tough here if the A's hopes are to survive this big effort by the Reds, who if they fail to tie it up here will be in the last of the batting order in the last of the night. Infield very deep back on that turf. Fingers throws a big curveball. It's fouled to the screen by Perez. Curveball in on the fist. Menke kneels on deck. Fighter Blue still is out in the open bullpen. Perez has more hits than anybody else in this series. He's got 10. Fingers back. Another curveball. Laced out to right field. Alou says he has it. Tagging at third base is Rose. Alou has it. Rose comes home to score the second run. Morgan goes to third. The tying run is at third base with two out in a three to two ball game.
Bench stays on at first, and Menke is up, and here comes Dick Williams again. Well, there's no need saving any speeches or strategy. And Raleigh Fingers is the kind of man that needs a lot of encouragement. Uh, Jim, uh, the A's players do a lot of talking to him during the course of the game. A short inning reliever has so much to think about in just throwing the ball to the plate and getting the batter that sometimes you'll forget a scouting report. Or you'll forget that a runner is at a certain position on the bases. So this is just a reminder and a confidence thing. With the runner at first base, Johnny Bench, you've got to think about what you're going to do if Bench breaks towards second trying to steal because Morgan on the front end of it could tie the ball game on a double steal. The A's got into the World Series when Reggie Jackson did just that against Detroit. So now, Bench is stolen. One base in the series. Might try to draw a throw. Almonte will also say that if Fingers can get Menke, he's got the seven, eight, nine batters in the last of the night. If he can't get him, he's got a tie-ball game and possibly a go-ahead run for Cincinnati. Menke steps in. He is two for 23 in the series, but he's hit a home run and has advanced the men. Fly ball down the right field line, curving foul on the curve ball and drops in the seats about six rows back. Strike one to Menke. Three runs, five hits, one error for the A's. Two runs, four hits, two errors for the Reds. And with the exception of yesterday, when they broke it open, the Reds, in the seventh inning, every one of these seven World Series games has been close and near a classic. Fingers stares in with runners at the corners and two out. That man over third base, Morgan, is the tying run. The one-strike pitch throws him a curve. It's outside. Ball one. One ball, one strike. Geronimo is on deck. And for the first time since before the game, we began to see some dark clouds off to our left. Rain was expected some time ago. One and one to Menke, the right-handed hitter. Curve ball outside again. Two balls, one strike. He has thrown Menke three straight breaking pitches. Menke fouled the first one down the right field line. The other two have been wide to the outside. Bent short lead off first base. Back, throws a fastball, fouled away. And it's 2-2. Two, -two. two balls, two strikes to Menke. One of the big outs of the World Series for the Reds, for the A's. And if he isn't out, we've got a tie ball game. They're going to move uh, Hegan in behind Bench now at first base. Giving Bench that lead. Two and two. Fingers ready on two-two. Bench is running. Bench is outside. Goes back to third. Go back to the pitcher, rather, to keep the man at third. They did not throw down to second base. As Hegan moved in back, that gave Bench the opportunity to take the big lead, not being held on, and he easily stole second. And so now, the man that Williams elected to walk to put on base, the potential winning run, is in scoring position on the stolen base. And it's 3-2 with two out. Everybody will be watching this pitch. First base is open. They don't have to go, barring the walk, to load them up. Here's a 3-2, throws him a curveball, it's popped up. Short left field, Capitals goes out, Rudy comes in. Rudy is there and has it for the third out. Fingers does the job. One run scores on just one base hit. There were no errors, and men left at second and third through eight innings. Oakland leads by a run, 3-2 over Cincinnati. Back at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, Jim Simpson, Monty Moore has been dispatched to the Oakland dressing room, and we may hear from him after this game is over. That is, if the Oakland A's win this game. But they're only a run apart. How dramatic this series has been. The first five games settled by a run. And apparently, the seventh and deciding game could also be settled by just one run. Now, in the Oakland night, it'll be green... Probably fingers their pitcher, depending upon circumstances. And when Cincinnati comes to bat in their half of the ninth, it'll be Geronimo, Concepcion, and the pitcher will be due up. And Sparky Anderson has used a lot of his 
pinch hitters. Ulander has batted. Haig has batted. Foster has been in the ball game. Green steps in against Tom Hall, who struck out two of the three men that he faced in the eighth. The other, Alou, simply knocked the ball on one bounce back to him at the mound. Green today is one for three. Facing the left-hander, Hall. Green swings on a change-up breaking pitch. It's strike one. 56,040. Is hoping that Hall can get out of this, most of them, so that their Reds can come back in the last of the night. Hall throws a fastball, and it's pulled foul down the line and will drop into the seats. Concepcion gives chase, but it's at least 20 rows back. Well, for the Oakland Rooters, wherever you are, your team has a one-run lead in the ninth inning. For the Reds Rooters, and there are lots of them around also, your team won the National League Championship down by a run in the last of the ninth at the deciding game and pulled it out. Two strikes now to Dick Green. The pitch, swinging strike three, breaking pitch. Hall has now struck out his third man. And that'll bring up Raleigh Fingers, the pitcher. Fingers is in his sixth game, and yet he has yet to come to bat. This is his first time at bat in a World Series. One out on the ninth, and there's a fastball. He throws it right by. Raleigh is up there not thinking base hits so much as he is thinking the last of the ninth inning, which he must pitch. Back again, off-speed pitch, catches the outside corner. It's strike two to fingers. They play Raleigh to hit the other way to right figuring that he'll not get around on a fastball of Tom Halls and pull it. There's a ground ball toward third base. Menke takes it on the big second hop, and Raleigh, chugging down the first baseline, is thrown out. So now with fingers all the way down the first baseline, Campanaris gets some dirt and walks away, and he'll be excused if he'll try to give fingers a little chance to get some rest. So that's what he's doing. He's pointing to the on-deck batter, Manguel, saying... Give me the rosin bag, and what he's really doing is let fingers trot back across the field, and after that run to first base, get a little extra breathing room. Three runs on five hits and one error for the A's. Two runs, four hits, and two errors for the Reds. The go-ahead run was knocked in by Sal Bando, the team captain, who led the team in game-winning RBIs during the regular season, but had no RBIs in this World Series until his double drove in the go-ahead run in the sixth. Hall is ready to pitch to Campanaris now. It's down low, ball one. Seventh game, World Series, two out. Oakland, ninth. The Reds have one more chance. Hall back and throws a strike at the knees to Campanaris. Well, we cannot talk too much about the championship playoffs of both leagues that for the first time in history, each went to five games. Neither had been to the full five before. And here we are in another seven-game World Series. One ball, one strike. And there's a ground ball up the middle. Campanaris says a base hit. First hit off Hall. And that's the sixth hit for the A's. And that will bring up Manguel, who scored the first round when Bobby Tolan, out of the game now with an injury, misplayed his line drive into a three-base error. Gene Tennis knocked him in. Since then, Manguel has popped out, sacrificed successfully, and grounded a third. Tennis left the ball game for runner after driving in two more runs in this game. That gives him nine RBIs for the World Series. And, of course, he had a record-tying four home runs. Three to two the score. Campanero's down at first base. Leading off, he's all the way on the turf. He's not over near... Perez is holding him there, and Campanaris retreats, and there's a swinging strike on a good fastball by Hall. He had Campanaris going back to first base as he's throwing the pitch to Manguel. Campanaris again edges out on that turf, away from the dirt spot on this almost fully covered turf here. Now they check him at first base. And Campanaris is back in plenty of time ahead of the soft lob throw of Tom Hall, the fifth Cincinnati pitcher in the seventh game of the series. 
Oh, pitching from the stretch. Campaneris moves it to go, but does not. Drive out to center field. Geronimo is playing there and comes in a couple of steps and takes it. We go to the last of the night. It was in the last of the ninth of the fifth game against the Pirates that the Reds won the National League Championship. And this is their last chance coming up to win the World Series. We go to the last of the ninth. Oakland leads Cincinnati 3-2. to two. Now for the last of the ninth of the World Series. This is Jim Simpson at Riverfront Stadium. Conference on the mound between Bando, Duncan, and Raleigh Fingers, who must pitch to Geronimo Concepcion and a pinch hitter. Jim McLaughlin, Don Gullett, warming up, should this go to nine innings. They know they're going to have to bat for the pitcher, Tom Hall. They want somebody ready, should it go to the tenth inning. Vita Blue is still warming up down in the Oakland dugout. Geronimo has walked once in three trips today. Left-handed batter against the right-handed Raleigh Fingers, who showed in his last appearance he has trouble with left-handers. Throws the first pitch. It's a fastball in under the hands. Ball one to Geronimo. A's lead it three to two. Fingers right back and throws another pitch. It's fouled off. Fastball fouled off to the left. One ball, one strike. To the left-handed hitting Geronimo, Fingers in his first two pitches has gone with the fastball. Charles O. Finley, very nervous, down behind the A's dugout. Back again with the fastball, and again he fouls it back. And now Fingers is ahead of the left-handed hitter Geronimo, one ball, two strikes. Concepcion, a right-handed swinger, is on deck. One and two. Fingers ready. Throws a breaking pitch. It's popped up towards shortstop. Capanero says he's got it and takes it. One out in the ninth. Well, Dick Williams got away with something that you don't do too often. That is on the road. Put the winning run on base. But with a man like Johnny Bench up there, he put Bench on base. The man ahead of John scored, but Bench was left stranded at third base. One run scored, and when the last of the night... Of a three to two ball game. Daryl Cheney, a switch hitter, is on deck as Concepcion steps in. Blue continues to warm. Fingers stares in at Concepcion, who has walked, flied out, and struck out in the seventh game of the World Series. Fingers throws him a good fastball on the outside corner. Strike one. Concepcion might have been looking for that sweeping curve of fingers that he usually gives the right-handers. Now he comes back and it's another fastball ground to the right side. Dick Green is there up with it. Throws over to Hegan and there are two out. Two out in the last of the ninth. Bando, Duncan, fingers can hardly contain themselves as Daryl Cheney, a switch hitter, comes up. Cheney, of course, will bat from the left side. He has been up seven times without a base hit in the World Series. And despite the fact that a right-hander Odom started today, Sparky Anderson went with Concepcion at shortstop, a right-hander, rather than Cheney who can swing from the left side. Dick Williams is up, holding on to the railing. Williams was in a World Series as a player. He managed the Red Sox in 67. Both other appearances, he was a loser. Today, he would like to win. Cheney up in this 3-2 game. Fingers back, throws a fastball, fouled off to the left. Strike one. A's lead it by a run. They came in without Daryl Knowles, their good left-handed reliever, and more importantly, without Reggie Jackson, their slugging cleanup batter and center fielder. They've extended the Reds to seven games. The Reds were heavily favored. Breaking pitch. It is hit Cheney. He takes first base. And it brings up Pete Rose. started the rally in the eighth inning, the man who has had eight straight 300 years, the man who led the major leagues and hits with 198, Pete Rose will get his swings as a breaking pitch from fingers, hit Cheney on the foot, and Cheney is still hobbling around at first base. Rose is up, Joe Morgan comes out on deck with two out in a 3-2 to two ball game in the last of the ninth. And now the Reds and their fans will remember that against 
The Pirates in the last of the ninth, they were down by a run and won it. Dick Williams comes out to talk to Raleigh Fingers. As Marty Moore, who departed for the Oakland dressing room, told us, Fingers is the type of man who needs a lot of encouragement. He needs to be told the situation. Now, Vida Blue is down in the bullpen. If Blue comes in, Rose will swing around to the right side of the plate. Pete is a better hitter from the left side of the plate. So the question, I am sure that Williams is saying, can you get him out? With Morgan on deck, this may be Finger's last man to face. Either the ball game is over or Morgan comes up and Vida Blue comes in. But we also remember that Morgan hits left-handers very well. So, even with two out on the last of the ninth, the wheels continue to turn and hold up. This series isn't over yet. Rose steps in. He is two for four today and has made great contact all four times. The other two were driven deep to the center field wall. Fly ball, deep left field. Rudy goes back. The other warning track is there. The World Series is over. And on one pitch, Rose is out. And the underdog Oakland Athletics win their first championship since they were in Philadelphia in 1930. Fingers is mob. And the Cincinnati Reds fans, a record crowd of better than 56,000, are absolutely stunned by the fact that the underdog A's, without Reggie Jackson, have taken the big red machine of the National League. And they did it in seven games. And so one record is intact. No club has ever lost the first two games at home and then come back to win a World Series. Only five clubs have been down 3-1 to one and come back to win a World Series. And the Reds fell short in another exciting game. The A's win it 3-2. to two. Crushed?